Hi everybody, welcome again to another episode of Shooting the Shit, especially October, a lot has been done. Well, before I start, say hello to my partner in crime, Zach. Yo. Yo. Um, tell us what's going on, tell us the first thing on the list. Alright, yeah, so, uh, first thing on the list is something I've been so happy about, the collapse of G4 yet again. Hold on. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the famous uh, Anders Sender clap. Yeah. Oh, my God. I have I was so happy about this. You know, everyone, everyone goes on about, oh, man, the new G4 sucked because it was woke and, and all that. See, my whole thing is, you know, you know that meme of Gus from Breaking Bad where it's like, oh, uh, you hate blank because of this. I hate blank because of this. You and I are not the same. You hate yeah. the new G4 for going w woke. I hate G4 because X Play and Adam Sessler always fucking sucked. You and I are not the same. I've always hated no. that motherfucker. I've always hated that channel. Oh. I've always hated X Play and their biased, horrible reviews, just constantly Dude. attacking anime oh. fans and fans of like JRPGs, anything remotely Japanese, and just the fact that all their reviews were meant to be negative on purpose. The writers confirmed that they were told to purposely be extremely harsh, which is completely fucked up because you're not getting an honest fucking review, and all that does is hurt the general perception of the game. The most egregious example I could... Two of the most egregious examples I could think about is uh, Morgan Manjaw Webb's horrible uh, review of Super Robot Wars OG. She says, oh, the fan base is in the U.S. is like one sad, lonely person. Which, you know, fuck that bitch. That's bullshit. Yeah, it's bullshit. I mean, yeah. it's not, yeah, it's not like it became like a fucking, uh, like the best selling SRW when it hits uh, Steam internationally because it was one sad, lonely person. Go fuck yourself. Uh, or, or you know, you, you had that, they had a third real douchebag that no one cared about, Blair Herter, making jokes about anime fans being autistic and just other dumb shit. And, I, and again, like Adam Sessler barely did a review for Mega Man Battle Network 6. Barely fucking talked about it. It was just him shitting on Mega Man, seeing how Mega Man used to go away. Capcom listened to the wrong motherfucker. Point is, Cheap War's always been shit, even before it, mer it merged and ruined Tech TV. Because when you had Tech TV, uh, you know, you had, you had badass shit like Anime Unleashed, Robot Wars. Robot Wars um, they showed sliders. Even X. Back then, it was tolerable because it wasn't even X Play; it was extended play, and it was just Adam Sessler at the Sony Metreon. Uh, yeah. You know, he before he the cocaine completely destroyed his brain, and with G Four, you know, they had they had their own version of X Play, which is uh, called the uh, Electronic Playground, which is like X Play's retarded cousin, which is saying something. There was only one yeah. good person on that show is Victor Lucas, because Victor Lucas seemed like an actual chill dude that you would actually would want to, you know, just chill and talk with video games about tommy tellerico can't review a video game to save his life amazing composer piece of shit scumbag con artist but also a really shitty video game critic. you know he gave kirby air ride a bad review because he hates kirby then why did you even touch this game or it's like oh capcom versus snk2 is bad because it's it's 2d he said he said the music in the kof orochi saga was awful like yeah i know you're a great composer but your ears are busted if you think if you think fucking uh, the KOF soundtrack from the golden era of SNK was awful. But I've always despised the reviews. So I was like, you know, we were in the middle of the pandemic. Everyone is at their lowest. Everyone is fucking depressed and miserable and just fearing death. And the last thing we needed, this blight on humanity, the last thing we needed to make things worse was X-Play coming back. And I felt so bad for dudes like Xavier Woods, and Gerard the Completionist, and even other YouTubers that they conned for quick cameos like Mighty Keith and Susie Spearhunter, people who are far more talented and funny, just have more talent in their fucking pinkies than anyone at G4. And like Xavier Woods never got his game show. Uh, yeah. But and, it, and the thing was when um when um G when, when I saw G4 and all that, it's just their shows weren't that they were, they had some pretty decent shows. Code Monkeys. But when it came down to that was Code about Monkeys it. Was great. <laughs> That's yeah, about it for I me. Yeah, because I actually, yeah, Code Monkeys was great. 
for me, it was Code Monkeys and six to 12 hours of cops. <laughs> uh, I love that shit. Uh, Ninja <laughs> Warrior. Ninja Warrior's pretty dope back then. Ninja Warrior was, was dope back then. Uh, and the thing that sucked was it's just those these reviewers were like, they became part of the mainstream reviewers of today. And like like your I, ING and your Kotakus and all them. Like, they shit on anything that's, like, not related to them or they don't like it. Especially G4 was the worst of all. Like, any Japanese game that came out was shit on. And it's like, just, really? Just like, admit that just admit you, you're a fucking racist asshole that, that hates Japan at this point with how... I just... I don't think it's because they were racist. I think it's because they were too stupid to play. Like, it was too hard for them. A lot of people of now... Bullshit. A lot of critics now, it kind of borders on it now. <laughs> like, yeah. like... It's but like just a pure distaste. Like why even touch it then? It's it's like the same For thing me, with like the people that made Genlock and you know, oh, you know, you adopt the anime aesthetic, but then you have to say that all mecha anime in the seventies and eighties was misogynistic and sexist. Like well no you see, just I, admit that you hate anime in Japan. For me, I I play this little game sometimes when I see I I and G and Kotaku review a Japanese game. Thank I play you. this little game of mine called Is it racist <laughs> or was it too hard for them to play? Did they just not get it? <laughs> they just not get it. <laughs> and then it, it's a nine times out of ten it's mostly racist. So like, oh it's not because they suck, it's just they're racist. Yeah. But I digress. Oh so, Japan's so, weird, am I right, guys? There's like Yeah. They like to, they like to eat like raw fish and take off shoes when they're in the house. They're weird, right? Oh, there's I'm new panties in a vending machine. That's so fucking gross. Am I right, guys? I'm I'm surprised not a reviewer in their staff dressed up as the dude from Breakfast with Tiffany's. I bet you Adam Sussman <laughs> does that shit. When no I bet you he in. does. He gets the the big teeth and the glasses and shit. And go hero. Yeah. yeah, no, he does that <laughs> shit. You know, he's he's that but it's kind of funny cuz he tries to portray uh parade himself as like a woke ally, but I he's the biggest fucking piece of shit of them all. Oh yeah. So, the thing that sucks about G4 was, okay, a lot of people don't know that you want to know who was the original producer and who wanted to have good intentions for it. And I interviewed him by the way. Um uh, the dude from Nick Arcade. He was he was one of the heads in that in that <coughs> department, but he got bought out, and they took it away from him. All he wanted was to bring back Nick Arcade and some cool game reviews. That's all he wanted for G Four, and they took that shit away from him, and it sucks. <laughs> With a, they brought back the same cringe, unfunny comedy that was never funny twenty years ago. It and it's like, and the thing is, it's like. And when I heard G4 was coming back, it's like, why? We have other YouTubers that do a better job. Like, some of us, like me and Zach, have different tastes on game reviewers. Like, like I like Angry Joe, and that's like a that's a can of words that no one wants to talk about. Uh, but we also have other reviews we, <laughs> we like in common, like Matt, Matt McMuscles, greatest fucking reviewer, not biased, hilarious as hell. Uh, I mean, he has else, he has who, his bias. Everyone does, but he's not like a complete like douche nozzle like Maximilian about it. Yeah. So there's like there's there's thousands of game reviewers. Heck, even this channel reviews games, and we do have our biases, but we we just try to give you as fair of a review as possible. We try to play all games as fair as possible. Well, you might see a sports game or two some down the future, but it has to be a really good sports game like NFL Blitz well, or NBA Jam. If you know, like, it's it's why I can't stand people like Dunkey, where the dude, the human, he says multiple times, "I hate uh, JRPGs," so then he reviews a JRPG and shits on it, and it's like, why subject yourself to this? I would never exactly touch a genre that I don't fucking care for. And the thing is, like, some of us will touch the genre that we're, we don't care for if it's really good. Like, if there's a hook, like I do, like, like example, like in in um Major League Baseball 2019, that shit is really fun. I never thought I'll play a baseball game in my life again, and this actually gives you the mechanics from simulation all the way to arcade. They did something right in that one. Yeah. Um. And of course, the character creation in the in the career mode is awesome. Yeah. Because for a baseball game of all things. So you know, because when they when they brought it back, and I said, "All right, let me let me see, maybe maybe you know, 
20 years, maybe they've evolved. Maybe they learned their lesson. That was me smoking the hopium. Because I yeah. still didn't like G4. Like, okay, let's see. I had low expectations. And then the first thing I see is Adam Sessler making fun of his intern for, who wants to play Monster Hunter, a popular Japanese title. And then Adam yeah. Sessler starts shitting on 3D Sonic games. But yeah, nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. All we're waiting on is the 12 hours of cops. <laughs> I would rather That's watch I 12 want. hours of cops. And oh, by the way, did you did you hear that cops is coming back? Oh, nice. I'm, <laughs> That's dope. I'm glad it got if they, canceled. If, yeah, I just hope G4 lasted long enough so it has a place to be watched. <laughs> well, I love the fact but, that cops came back and told G4, I live, bitch. Yeah. So the thing is, when I was watching these um, quote-unquote new episodes of G4, because... They basically end up making two YouTube ch channels, one for G4 and one for X Play, and and I and the first thing I saw here, this is no joke. I was never gonna watch an episode at all until I think it was you, my cousin, and two other people tell me, "Hey, you better check this bitch out." And I'm like, which bitch? Our good old, the, our good old friend uh, Forskid. <laughs> Forskid. And when I saw that clip of her saying this, I'm like. Okay, I was not gonna say shit about you. I was not gonna acknowledge you. I was not gonna pay attention to G four. Now I do want to pay attention. I want to see how long you're gonna last after saying that speech. Especially the icing on the cake was, if you don't like it, don't watch. And they're like, oh, that's a nice way to lose a lot of audience. Because there are a lot of people that had nostalgia for G four. I think it's misguided nostalgia, but nostalgia nonetheless. And they were very yeah. upset about it. Now, granted, the asshole part of me could say there's better things to watch on YouTube. YouTube made that whole channel irrelevant. Uh, so, again, there is no need. I'd rather subject myself to nostalgia critic. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, there's other YouTube channels that do bad reviews and all that. We already went about this a lot. Like, there's thousands. And like I said, even our own channel is one. Yeah. But we like to review other shit, too, for fun. We basically review whatever we like, but sometimes we'll review stuff we don't like, but we'll, make, we'll clown on it for, for, for jokes. Shout but the point out is, to we my, review... Shout out to my, boy, uh, to my friend, uh, uh, Colonel Fancy, Burn Retinas. He's another, like, smaller YouTuber that does game reviews. You'll find someone out yeah. there. There's a t and Even if it's not, like... And I always hear people... It's a little bit of a tangent, but, you know, there's people saying, ah, you know... It, whether you're a streamer or a YouTuber, you're like, man, I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm not getting enough views. No one's watching my shit. Why do I do this? Like, at the end, I kind of feel that you should kind of just do it for yourself. Yeah, and your audience yourself, will eventually for... come. If they like your content, on top of that, they'll stick. Even if it's only 12 thing people. Is, you got 12 yeah. cool people that are willing to follow you. Yeah, we got 54 people now. We got that additional four because of YouTube doing the greatest thing of all. Gave smaller channels the community tab that we desperately needed. And our channel grew from 50 to 54. <laughs> Thank you all, 54 of you, for staying by. And to be honest, I I want to be a channel that's a cult following more than anything. So, Forskid, after her rant, and she's, you know, she's, uh, and, you know, she's bitching about how, like, oh, you know, we're not meant to be eye candy. And, da, da, da. and so, after that, G4 immediately backpedaled. And they had to get Amaranth oh, yeah. in, like, was it Pudding while Iron Mouse and a bunch of VTubers cheered her on? I felt so bad for Iron Mouse because I feel she's above this. <laughs> but She is. Uh, but, like, that didn't even help. It was too late. No. The damage was already done. It was too done. late. And the worst part about it is, like, some of these people who worked under her, she she mentioned them. And the, and the messed up part was they got fired. And then she do that meme... Oh, like I oh, survive. Oh yeah, I survive. And I'm like, are you really gonna do that? That is fucked. That's completely and, fucked. You're you're a fucking then, shit bag for doing that. And of course she go. Of course she got fired for that. Thank God, because it's like, if I was in charge of that company, I'm like, no, you're gonna get fired too for that shit. Because that's fucking, that's a slap on the face of those employees who had to lose their jobs because of your dumb ass. You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Yep, stupid games, stupid prizes. That's what she got. And and the worst part about it is when they shut down finally, half of the employees didn't even get an email 
Dude, they found out through a news article. The, yeah, I feel so bad for – so I don't follow – I'm not familiar with this guy's content, but I know he has a following, uh, Gerard, the completionist. He was the he was the, the chubby dude with the beard that was sitting right next to Foreskin when she went to her rant. And you can – if you look at his head, you look at his face, he had like that Tony Khan look of – what oh, the fuck dude. have I gotten myself into? He regretted was, everything. I felt so bad for that dude. Dude, it wasn't that face. It was the face of like, I just lost my job today. Like he knew, like soon as she said that stuff and she looked at her and then he looked at the camera. And he's like, I think I'm done, but I am done. I'm about to lose my job in a few months. I have to go back to YouTube again. Yeah, this is it. The really fucked up part, though, is that he found out about it from a Wario sixty four uh uh post on Twitter, and his I have his tweet. Yeah. He says, "Hey, this tweet is how I found out uh, how I lost my job. How deep? <laughs> Poor guy. I don't say stuff. I feel bad for this one girl. I saw I was like, she took a mental day off for mental mental health day off. Like, was it and mental she health found awareness out she, or whatever? Or? No, no, no. She really took the day off because she wasn't feeling okay. mentally well. Like, you know, she was a little depressed and all that. Well, she was on vacation, basically. Uh. She saw the news article and she lost her job. <clears throat> I was like, well, my mental health day went from bad to worse. I'm like, fuck. Uh. And then the other employees, dude. Oh, my God. The other employees said so much shit after that when they found out how they lost their job. Some actually went to another YouTuber and told them. Like, they told them all, everything went behind the scenes during this reboot of G4. Um, it's it's um, it's um a it's a YouTube channel. It starts with Cat something. But my cousin follows it because he's a comic book writer. And you can, this is a comic book page, You too. can add the link I don't in know the, the description. Yeah, well, you'll find I'll out later. I'll add the link to the description. Yeah. So these guys told they spilled basically they they spilled the tea and they told them exactly what went behind the scenes in the new G four before the frost talk and after the frost talk and they said like yeah we had to be negative reviews on certain games certain games got positive reviews because we were getting sponsorship money from the game and the company for that um, and our segments were not that funny so they made us add shit that we didn't really need it or want to like they were just going. Uh, ups and downs like dude like i'm like thinking do they still run like a youtube channel like a tv um studio like like i'm guilty of that too like i do admit that sometimes i run my youtube channel like a tv thing but i do it because it's kind of funny and ironic because you know <coughs> this boomer still does not know how youtube works <laughs> at times so i run with it ironically but it's fun uh but they're literally running like a, a tv studio and i'm like you know, you could just set up whatever time you want. Like, the 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 X Play reviews do not have to be four p.m. all the time. They could be like three p.m. or one p.m. Hell, you could just schedule. You can record like five episodes in a row and just schedule it later. Yeah, you know. You know? Funny thing you so, said about the Huber. Huber was so unfunny and bad. It made Biodome look like Blazing Saddles. Oh God, that was that's hilarious. <laughs> And it's just, I don't know what puts Zestone to bring back G4. Like, I understand if you want to bring back your not biased gaming reviews, but at the same time, it's like, you're kind of late on the on this, by the way. There's like thousands of thousands of um, YouTuber reviewers. And not just YouTube, by the way. They tried to, they, they did the same thing on Twitch. They brought it back on Twitch for live shows. And like, you know, you got thousands and thousands of Twitch players that play the game in real time. While they're reviewing it, so I don't see the point of watching your channel. Have you seen Adam Sessler's meltdown on Twitter, where he was Dude. he was attacking people, making your mom jokes, wishing death, like. Dude, he I've been I've been on that page because the last one of his last tweets is like I'll fight anybody, and I'm like, I'm like if I didn't get my Twitter account banned. I'll definitely tell like, hey man, you, me, boxy ring, charity. Let's do this. I'll gladly fight him. <clears throat> like if you're, if Afu is listening to this little small channel, or someone passes this clip along to him, tell him that Johnny will fight him bare knuckle boxing in the middle of the street for charity. He's probably too coked out of his fucking skull right now to be listened. Dude, that's even better. I have a challenge. 
He at least he has a power up advantage. That's going to be an even level playing field. So he needs all the help he could get. As the kids always say, pack watch, rest and piss, bozo. <laughs> There's going to be smoking <laughs> that G4 hater pack that I've always been smoking. It was it was so ridiculous. Like the 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 down the decline was quick too. I never expected it to go that fast. Like I was give like to be honest. After she said that little like her little rant, I expected to last a year. I didn't expect to go down. It was less than that. It was within like three to four months. That was fast. Yeah, honestly, the decline. I was happy that it was that it didn't take too long. I did not want us to suffer anymore. No, like. And the sad thing is, I was not going to pay attention to it. Like, I didn't care. Like, it was going to be one of those things, like, a lot of people were telling me, like, are you going to make fun of G4? Because I know how much you hate G4. I was like, no. What's the point? Yeah. And until she until she opened her mouth and said all that woke shit, it's like, are you for real? I was going to leave you alone. <laughs> I was not going to care. But you know what's ironic? What came back at the same time, and it's great it did? Robot Wars. You can watch it free on 2B, and it's kicking ass. And then, and some of the old <laughs> champions came back. Some of the old fighters, they, they still got it. They need to bring back Mick Foley, the host, or was that BattleBots? I get those two confused. That was battle. That was BattleBots. All right. Yeah, I get, no, I want. I get I want, those two. Confused. I wish it. Yeah. No, I kind of wish the the host was that old British Samoan dude though, because he was cool. He had a leather jacket. He treated. He treated Robot Wars like an underground pit fighting arena, but in this version, they treated it like a basically a rich man's arena. Like there, it still looks dungeon and gritty, but now because everybody loves robotics in this day and age, it doesn't feel like an underground sport anymore. It became mainstream, but it's cool though. I like it though because it, it gives you that NFL football game of the play, but with robots that kill Dude, each other. Dude, it's just like one of my so that's Japanese dope. animes. You got this robot competition. You, it, it's literally, it's literally, it's literally fucking Gundam Builder in real life. I'm not joking. It literally is. You should watch one or two episodes on 2B. It's literally Gundam Builder in real life. Yeah. Uh, again, some that did not need to come back, especially no. at the worst possible time. No one was in the mood for that. No one was like. They thought it was a smart idea, to, especially during COVID when everybody's forced to be at home. Well, most people, but you got people like me who work at Amazon, had to go through, basically play Dead Stranding for real in real life to deliver people's packages. But that's beside the point. No one did not need to suggest that they had to be forced to watch this at home. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, happy, to, I'm, I'm happy to see it die twice. I, I yeah. feel bad for people that lost their job. That that does suck. But it does. Like I have, G4 I have like dying was a necessary evil. The morning sun yeah, is vanquished like, the horrible night. But I bet some of these guys, though, the ones who were behind the scenes, behind the cameras, they're gonna get, they're gonna get, they're gonna find something. Trust me. There's people who are hire these talents because there's a lot of people, a lot of people that work in broadcasting are very high demand well, in. The, the main offices, but even down to the lower D offices. Well, like, it, th these guys are really high demand. Was it G4 owned by uh, Comcast? I'm pretty sure some of those people might get jobs at, like, was it uh, NBC Universal? Because I think Comcast yeah. owns NBC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's some who literally got laid off, laid off. Like, they they can't work for Comcast. They will get picked up. I hope they do because yeah. they didn't deserve that. And, you know, all the, like, all should, the YouTubers the people that, that, that got let go... They have big enough followings. They'll they'll be fine. Xavier Woods, of course, he's gonna be fine. Yeah, like like I like it's like this: the ones who didn't really deserve to get fired should have stayed, and the ones who should have got fired should have been let go. Like Adam Sam, Adam and that foreskin bitch, like they should have got fired and, and getting you host. Like that's what they should have done. See, yeah, that's the other thing. It's like the whole thing should have been a. Complete Completely fresh start, completely new take. We're, you should have say, said straight out the bat, we're not going to be like the old X play. We're not going to do any. We're, we're actually going to, you know, we're, we're not going to be uh, unfair and shit. Don't have Ad, Adam anywhere near it. No, it should have been like this. As soon as she opened her mouth, she should have been fired right off the bat. They should have got a new host and it would have been saved. 
But no, they were doubling down on her for that shit. And it's like, no. Well, what's the rule? Go when you go woke, be you, you, when you go woke, be broke. Don't do that. Broke. Yeah. Go and that was the problem. Broke. Like, don't do that. Like, you should have fired her. You should have fired her Adam. Got to new host, and G4 could have been saved. It should have just been Xavier Woods and Gerard. <laughs> yeah. It have just been the, and they could have gotten uh, Susie Spearhunter. She she did one video for them. I saw the Dude, video Adam Cole did for them. That was bad. You know what they should have done to be smart? If they wanted someone to review Japanese games, they should have got Asuka. That shit would have been dope. Oh, you know Let's that you real. know G4 would never allow that. That's bullshit. Like, come on. It would be funny. Like, I see her YouTube channel. It's not a gaming channel. You, you know, but it's she's hilarious. You know who it should have been? You know who it should have been? Uh, let me Ooh. see if I can find her name. Uh you ever heard of a YouTube channel called uh, uh well let me see if I get the name right. Uh uh Food for Dogs. It's it's like yes. It's this old. It's like this sweet British grandma that reviews the most like niche weeb JRPGs. I'm I'm not just talking like your mainstream like you know, you know uh a Persona or Final Fantasy. She's doing stuff like uh like a uh, a teller was it like a yeast or or the Ateller series like really just obscure shit. They, she should just be reviewing JRPGs on that channel. She should. She 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 would have. It's great seeing her channel because it's like, it's dope seeing her play it and her reviewing it and trying to like talk about it. It's like, see, you you could get someone like that to review games. Also, it's like it's pretty fun and interesting. Also proves like age is nothing but a number. You don't have to. Uh, yeah, here's a sweet elderly br- British grandma. She's enjoying like all the super weeb uh, JRPG stuff. Dude, the the other grandma I follow is um she finally beat it. She there was this grandmother that was playing um Skyrim. Oh yeah. She totally beat it. And she was playing it because um she met a friend online that's a young kid and like they pl- they basically go on raids together. And like that's dope. So it's yeah. like uh, it's like when you hear like about like uh Jason Mewes or Sam Man playing Fortnite with their kids. Yeah. It's it's really cool seeing that it's like it's like gaming is for everybody. That's the number one thing a channel, most of these channels, especially G four, don't get. It's like gaming is meant for everybody. You just gotta fight the right game for them. And and also it's like it's not it, the quote uh, Joe Dirt. It's not what you want. It's the it's not what you like. It's the consumer. Yep. And that's what they they that's what they keep forgetting. It's like. In the end of the day, you got to please your fans. Like, you will lose some fans along the way, yes, over time. But it's like, but the majority of your fans will stay because they like your content and you like them. And if you don't know how to grasp that, you're doing something wrong. And G4 was the ultimate proof of, of, don't piss off your audience. Don't attack your audience. Don't treat your audience dumb. Because they could totally destroy your channel and basically tell you to fuck off i hope we never ever have to talk about g4 ever again i hope they I never hope, come back i hope they don't come back but if they do come back be smart don't hire anybody back from the old time back get a new basically can we just get like the new cast to save by the bell type of feel <laughs> Like, we just want you kids, all right? We just want you kids. We want you people. No one ties into the old. See, and I'll be okay with I that. I agree with that, but that point, I wouldn't even use the name. I The name is, the brand is too toxic. It is. You know what they should do as a joke? They should have, like, a young teenage chick running down the middle of the aisle of everybody playing a game, throws the hammer on the screen, it shows Adder Satter's face, and the screen breaks, just like that Sess- Apple commercial. Sessler. Oh, God. Yeah, Adam Sessler. Did you see the Fortnite version of that when they were having their, 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 their bitch fit Apple- with Apple? Oh, dude, that, that was, was so cringe. That was, that was so cringe, but at the same time, I was laughing. Like, oh, that's pretty funny. Oh, I thought it was hilarious, <laughs> but it was very cringe. <laughs> but I get it. Like, it's true. Apple does charge up a lot of shit for no reason. 
But like, did you really have to make fun of Apple using their old commercial? That's like, uh, yeah, that was all right. It was very like bitter, bitch, insecure shit. Yeah, but like, I'm just uh, the bottom line for us is like, I'm glad it's over. The nightmare is done, and we can move on and watch real YouTubers like Matt's Flophouse or or um. Other gaming channels that don't do it. Like up, up, down, down. Or us. Angry video gamer. <laughs> or us. <laughs> Maybe not us. Maybe not us. Not us. We're, we're kind of a weird taste. It's, it's very hard. It's acquired. Acquired taste. It's acquired. It's like, it's, it's like you got to swallow a big ass pill. <laughs> but uh, again, rest in piss, Bozo. Rest in piss. Yep. Rest in piss, foreskin. <laughs> it's uh. I, I, I hope Sessler has like a coke induced heart attack. <laughs> I want to see him on the news just losing his shit in the street, like just, like like that dude, like that dude who um, you know um, you know the the dude who did um that um that fundraiser thing about um the internet internet historian made a video of him um um you know the McConey or something um. The child soldier dude, like he made the video. The guy got butt naked. He started walking down the streets of L.A. because he had a mental breakdown. I got it. I got it. Yeah. He needs to go the way of Herb Abrams. He needs oh to yes. Be completely butt ass naked, covered in baby oil, high off of copious amounts of cocaine, while chasing a hooker around with a baseball bat. Oh, a lot of people don't know what that means. It's a wrestling reference. Just, Look it just up. Just watch the uh, w- watch the Herb Abrams episode of Dark Side of the Ring. By Vice, yeah, watch it. It's really good, and it's just it's it's just ridiculous. Like I'm glad it's over. I feel bad. I really do feel bad for the people behind the scenes and the cameras that lost their job because they didn't deserve that shit. They worked their asses off. Like that's the only number one thing I agree with. Foreskin is. They really do work their asses off because I used to do that shit, and it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy to point a camera at a at a horrible person. Although it kind of feels like it, it, so, some people aren't getting a camera pointed at them, they're probably getting a gun pointed at them backstage. Yeah, they're like they're telling them, "Didi Mao, make her look good." <laughs> what part of Mao, Didi Mao, don't you understand? <laughs> oh, uh, oh. Uh, my bad. Uh, Food for dogs. She's not British. She's she's from New Zealand. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, she's a kiwi. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I want to talk less about G4 because we should really bury it one last time. That's it. A- again, let it be in the just it's yeah, something it... that's best left forgotten and just dead and yeah. buried. Dead and buried. So I'll let you take a. Uh... Uh, I'll let you take this next one, or uh, did uh, or did you want to save it? Because uh, that's like the biggest one. That's the biggest one. If you're talking about the one with um S S H, I'd rather save that to the end. Okay, that's that was the biggest news of the day. So of of the month. All right. So then, uh, all right. So then we'll uh, we'll do this one next. It's a, it's a little smaller. Um, I want to talk about this because. Uh, the Godzilla versus Evangelion uh, Pachinko game. Now, normally we won't, we wouldn't even fart in the general direction of Pachinko. But the reason why I want to bring this up because, unfortunately, and I don't mean this in a bad way because it's cool. It just sucks that that it has to be this way. This Pachinko game has lore. It's uh, yeah. uh, so in in this because they're using the Shin Godzilla design. And basically, Shin God, at least in the universe of this Pachinko, Shin Godzilla and it exists in the same universe as uh, Rebuild of Evangelion. So they said, you know, Godzilla was basically, you know, something that humanity fought before in the past, and he's returned. They refer to him as a god of destruction. And they bring in Ghidorah, who in this version is referred to as the King of Angels, basically the ultimate angel. He's got a the, the, the angel core in the AT field. And God, uh, you know, God, Shin Godzilla and uh, Ava Unit One team up to fight it. And you know, as they're getting their asses kicked, it shows uh, uh, 
Shin Godzilla just shoots a bunch of nuclear energy energy at uh, Shinji Zeva, and Unit One tr- starts transforming to a uh, a Godzilla Eva hybrid. It's the sickest shit. It looks so cool, and I'm so fucking mad. It's a pachinko game. Like this could have been an animated movie. This could have been a video game. No, we gotta make a pachinko. And that's crazy. Like a pachinko of all things. Like who the why? fuck asked for this? Like it, it's it, it goes down the bigger rabbit hole of because I've I've talked about this before, uh, may not on the show, but like one uh, one of my most hated pachinko moments is um, I think this is back in like. Oh, 2010, 2012. But it was around the time that uh, Shin Mazinger was airing. So, you know, it was an amazing uh, retelling of the original Mazinger Z. <laughs> and I see this trailer for what looks like a potential remake of Combatler V. It's with, you know, like this uh, modern animation, slightly tweaked designs. It looks amazing. Fuck, this looks hype as hell. They remixed the theme song. I'm getting into it. And it's Pachinko. You motherfuckers. You just fucking set me up like that and you stabbed me in the fucking heart. And I just sick and tired of Pachinko. It's where franchises go to die. It's it's why, like, I never jumped on the dumbass uh, hate train for KO. F14 when that game was first revealed and everyone was shitting and pissing themselves about the graphics. Because I was, because people, forget no one that talks about this and, and this is why like it infuriated me even more is that at the time snk was so in the shitter that they had to resort to making pachinko so when they announced kof 14 an honest to god actual kof sequel and unlike 13 it was actually going to have a bunch of new characters and a big roster and all that um i was excited but everyone was pissing and shitting themselves because oh, it looks like a PS2 game. Ugh. Where's my HD sprites that nearly bankrupted SNK? Well, yeah, there's your fucking answer. Uh, and so I was just grateful to have a KOF game that wasn't Pachinko. And yeah, But Pachinko's it, were good ideas go to die. It's just as cancerous as mobile. And the thing that sucks about Japanese Pachinko's it's like, it, it's... Okay, so for th- for this one, especially the Godzilla Evangelion one, was like they did this before as a universal ride in Japan, and that was great. That's a cool idea. I want I wanted to go to that. And before and that, that, it was, was like a, cool a big idea, but... merchandising campaign. There's all sorts of cool merch you could get: figures, posters. Uh, what well, they had like the the fuck uh, the the big head sippy cups you could get at Universal Japan. Yeah, like they went all out on the marketing for Shin Godzilla Cross Ava stuff, and um. Not just that, but it's just like when I see these Pachinko machines with the coolest graphics and the and you know game companies making them, especially Konami, it's the worst one of the, of them all. Like they end up using like the the Foxhound engine to remake three for the Pachinko, and I'm like, you just wasted a golden opportunity. You could have done this for a HD remake of three, yeah, it- or a remaster edition. Yeah, they just redid all the cutscenes in the Fox engine. Just gorgeous. Just uh, looks amazing. And it's a fucking pachinko game. And it sucks too because... Okay, so if people don't know... A lot of people might not know this, but a lot of people might do. Because if, if gaming... You know, this game is old, but not that old. When they remade... When they remade Make Your Solid 1, the PlayStation 1 game... They reused the the Maker Solid 2 engine for it for GameCube. It was great. It looked better. It played better because it's using the engine of of MGS2 for it. They could have done that with the with uh, the Fox the Foxhound engine for three. That means three will still look beautiful and great, but the gameplay of it will change for the better. Like the gameplay was good already because it was using the MGS2 engine, but beefy. But the Foxhound engine was a monster. Like, it did everything what I wanted for a spy game. And and if 3 sold well with this engine, we could have had Guns of the Patriot with this engine. And Guns of the Patriot could have been a little bit better in gameplay-wise because it felt a little awkward at times. But the point is, it's like you wasted this 
on a pachinko machine that you could only play in Japan or for some stupid miracle reason some guy will bring it to an anime convention in Pasadena and put it in the arcade booth section. So <laughs> there, that's the only way you could play it. I remember there's the episode of Power Rangers where you could tell this is straight up just something they just recycled from the Sentai. But there's an episode where Ernie brought a pachinko machine. And then I think Rita oh, yeah. or Zed or whoever turns his pachinko machine into a monster. And I'm just, who the fuck in America know, knows what the fuck pachinko is? Who is it like a gamer or a weeb? Yeah, like who the fuck is going to play this gabbly system that no one knows how to play in uh, America? Uh, you know, uh, uh, our thing I hate is when they take like uh, classic anime openings and they remake them with gorgeous like modern animation. It just co- like the really good clean looking and it's pachinko. And it's ridiculous. Like you can find thousands of YouTube videos and you'll see like videos of intros, outros, actual full episodes for these pachinko machines. And you're never going to get that for studios or, or projects or anything. It's like they wasted it for Pachinko. Yeah, I get it. In Japan, like, Pachinko is one of the most gambling systems that make a lot of money. But it's like, you got to understand, um, it'll be kind of nice to see that on actual product that people could buy and watch all the time. Not just for gambling purposes. Uh, it, it's one of the reasons why Konami hasn't really made a lot of games. Because they kind of don't need to when they got all that pachinko money sadly well sadly but it's cool that they did something and it's cool they they we'll talk about it later of course but we're like it's it's the biggest news and i know everybody wants to hear our opinions on the stuff they're gonna make but not now so yeah. we, we really gotta save that but yeah i'm pissed that this godzilla cross evangelion thing is a pachinko machine and the only way i could enjoy it is some guy in Japan has to record himself playing this game to the end without losing money. And that's the only way I can see these cutscenes. That's it. Uh, can I can I just get Godzilla Cross Evangelion and Super Robot Wars? Preferably one that's not a shitty gotcha mobile game. Can I just get it yeah. in like a mainline real SRW? I'll just take that. That'd I, be I, the best way to I'd do it. I'd be happy with that. Well, uh, some other not quite so happy news. This has just <laughs> been a big clusterfuck. It's a roller coaster of emotions and bullshit. It's been a mess. The and we got to talk about because right now it's like the hottest story, uh, drama wise in the world of video games. Uh, the Bayonetta voice actor news. So. Basically, for those who haven't been living under rock, uh, Helena Taylor, who was the voice of Bayonetta in uh, in the first two games in Smash Brothers, uh, no, we uh, we we kind of suspected that she wasn't going to come back. You know, her vo- Bayonetta didn't sound quite right, and you know, Platinum said that uh, there was like a scheduling conflict or whatever, so that's why they got uh, Jennifer Hale to be Bayonetta. And hey, I love Jennifer Hale. I think she's fucking great as a voice actor so no no problem there but uh and you know people were like a little bummed but i was like all right you know it's fine then a few weeks later maybe like three weeks before the release date helena taylor puts out a video and she says that uh that apparently she got lowballed that they they offered her four four grand just to do bayonetta and you know, uh, you know, they really just uh, dicked her around, and that I guess when she, uh, she felt that she, you know, she should be paid more because this is like the third game in this in this you know uh, big fan favorite series. So she goes to email Kamiya in Japanese, and he tells her like, "Oh yeah, you know, we really value, you know, we like your work, we want you," and then that's when she gets the offer. So she takes it as a personal offense and ends up. You know, puts the video up and tries to rally fans to boycott it. Now, Camille, uh, no, no, when people ask Camille, Camille, in typical Camille fashion, has to be a dick. And he's like, obey my rules. You know, she's fucking lying. And then ends up blocking people. Now, I know Camille's gimmick is that he doesn't like people speak talking to him in Japanese. He's always been kind of a 
xenophobic asshole towards gaijin he's you know like and he calls like a lot of english speakers insects and will block anyone that speaks in english but people are like oh haha ha, you know funny angry video game man blocks people it's, it's his gimmick you know some people wear it as a bad of, of honor there's a time and place when it's not okay to lean into that gimmick because this just made him look like a, a way bigger asshole and i remember there's an old uh doc there's a documentary with platinum where i think that when they were working on um wonderful 101 and inaba who was the, the head of uh platinum he was saying in the video and I don't know how the fuck Kamiya can get any work done because he's always on his fucking phone. And I feel this dude needs to stay the fuck off Twitter. So everyone was pissed off at Kamiya. Everyone was pissed off at Platinum. How dare they do this? Because you know what? Voice actors, especially in like video games and anime, get fucked around a lot. You know, there's the whole situation with Crunchyroll and the Mob Psycho shit where they did uh, the voice actor for Mob wanted a union contract and they did not want to give him a union contract. So they replaced them for the third season of this, you know, he, the final season of this big show and, you know, or like, you know, like there's the whole thing about like uh, uh, a lot of veteran voice actors, not uh, cartoon voice actors, not getting roles in big feature films. Like, you know, the, the entire Scooby-Doo cast, except Frank Welker kind of got fucked over with uh Scoob. And then, um, or, you know, there's a case of, like, a lot of people would really want Charles Martinet to voice Mario in the Mario movie. And, you know, the Hollywood would rather just go for a big Hollywood name. Granted, I'm not per a particularly a fan of Martinet's Mario voice, but I get it. That's why I was actually happy to see Tails' uh, voice actors come, come in for Sonic 2. Because originally, she was not going to be in Sonic 2. She was just for that little cameo at the end of 1. But Fandom Man... Uh, got her the role and not only that fandom man also got her properly credited on the poster which i was happy about but the point is voice actors don't get respect you know a lot of people look down on it because it's not real acting but no if anything i feel voice acting is way harder i i really do yeah, think I, it is yeah i do agree with you on that voice acting is way harder um and this whole situation with her and platinum was like it just went off it went off the rails yeah it really did like way quick way fast that it should have like people were like Kim oh good oh because of Camille doing what he does normally best like you know blocking people and i'm like dude um that's not a smart idea at the moment because they need to know your side of the story what's going on and if you do this it makes you look like you're guilty yeah, and you sh and you know, and that's what makes companies look worse if they look guilty. And the funny thing is, though, because he was, he was just mass blocking people. Twitter took it as a spam block, and they they uh they limited they restricted his account, and then his account got temporarily shut down. It's he's back up on Twitter, but it's like because he, he again, like he was just it's this usual thing to just like block people. But yeah, no, it just made him, it, it just it just made him really look guilty. But you know, she was orchestrating this big boycott, which it seemed a little weird. Like, you know, game's out in a few weeks, and you're just doing this now. I don't know. It seemed a little premeditated. But you know, everyone is quick to get on the boycott train. I wasn't, because I, because while again, I was sympathetic towards her plight of like you know the whole thing with voice actors like something didn't quite add up you know watching that video and i know she's like a theater kid but it felt very drama queen uh, ish where she was just like kind of trembling and kind of being way too serious about it like it was like a life and death situation and then she said that bayonetta was like a 450 million dollar franchise which i could already smell bullshit on that because look as amazing fantastic as platinum's games are they're notoriously not great sellers. They just never been able to sell well. In fact, the only reason why Bayonetta two and three got made is because Sega just did not want to publish a sequel, and Nintendo were the ones who uh, funded Platinum. So something seemed fishy. And then also, like in I think in the fourth video she posted, she threw Jennifer Hale under the bus. She's like, she has no right to be Bayonetta. 
Well, yeah, she does because she just got the role. Yeah, but and that's that's kind of like really you're really attacking one of your own like that. It's that's kind of messed oh, up. I'll get to that. Too. I'll I'll get to and, that in a second because well, her heart ain't I, in, yeah. in it. But so so then. Uh, Jason Schreer, formerly of Kotaku, uh, he he reported that apparently this was false. That Platinum actually offered uh, uh, they didn't offer her uh, just straight up just four thousand for the whole role. They offer her like three to four thousand for basically five sessions. So so that would at least so like you know, per session. So that would at least give her. Like fifteen to twenty grand, which is you know it's not it's not a lot for for, for something like that, but it's still a lot. But she yeah. demanded six figures. The four thousand at the end was actually for an extra cameo. They wanted to keep her, but she was actually uh she was demanding more. And and then after that, you know, she turned it down after you know they they gave her the um. Uh, because I guess what they want to do, it's like, okay, we'll get a new actor, but we want to get you in as a cameo. She didn't even want that. So she denies all that. She's sticking to her story. She said, oh, Platinum is trying to save their ass in the game. It's an absolute lie. It's bullshit. And, and then she ends up contradicting herself because she ends up saying that, oh, yeah, I was offered the, the, the 15 grand. And our now you just yeah you just kind of shot yourself in the foot now yeah yeah so she was caught lying in 4k for everyone to see uh and i understand there's like ndas and stuff because jennifer hale can't defend herself with this because you know she can't really talk too much because the ndas but i know jennifer hale put out a statement uh Cause she, uh, you know, and I, and again, like she, she caught like the bullshit end of this when she was just kind of like in mind her own business in the crosshairs. But yeah, so now Helena Taylor was exposed to be a liar and you could tell she was even saying like, look, I want to put this behind me. I want to just get back to theater and, and like, you no, know, so it's not quite right. So I look up her IMDB and Aside from maybe like a few bit parts here, the only real voice acting she's done is Bayonetta. She's only done the games in Smash Brothers. She's her work is primarily theater, so uh, in the UK especially. So it seems like this was something that she got, but she didn't really her heart. You know, she wasn't really there to, to be voice acting long term, and. You know, everyone's saying, well, you know, y'all owe Kamiya an apology because they were telling the truth. No, I don't owe Kamiya an apology because he still handled himself really badly. It's not the way, because again, all you have to say is like, you know, uh, like either not say anything and then wait to put out an official, you know, people are like, okay, you know, maybe we'll, we'll wait for till Platinum says something. Or, you know, just say, uh, uh, these claims are false, but I'm not at liberty to discuss it in full detail right now. You know, something like that would have been sufficient. But I think the real damning thing here is that it really hurts the plight of the voice actor because now you're going to get people who are going to, whenever a voice actor brings up a similar issue about pay and treatment, people are going to be like, well, how do we know they're not lying like Helena was? And I know people are going to do that. That fucking sucks. It's not just people. It's also lawyer and contract deals. Because a lot of people don't understand. When you go to court cases with stuff like this. And the way they could counter sue or counteract to this stuff. Is this is how crazy being a lawyer is. And how easy it is actually if you study. Besides learning all the laws. That's the hard part. But the way you could win a case is by actually doing your homework and going past cases that dealt with this similar issue. And now because of this being part of it, it counts as an issue. And all the thing the lawyer has to do is to do its research, 
find this exact moment in time that this happened and use it for a court case. Well, and that's it. Well, let's talk about people saying like, oh, well, what they're lying. You, you know there's going to be exactly. some smart ass on Twitter. No, I know. But also lawyers are good. That's what lawyers are, dude. No, lawyers are smart oh, yeah, asses. But I'm, I'm just talking about like the people, you know, there's going to be dumb ass, dumb asses on Twitter yeah. who are going to do that especially. And again, I this should not re- – yeah, she fucking lied and Camille is a dickwad. But this should not take away that voice actors should be paid what they're owed. And they should, you know, be yeah. properly credited. And you know, they they shouldn't get like fucked out of a role because Hollywood wants, you know, big name celebrity guy. But you know what's really funny when she orchestrated when she is demanding people to boycott, and then you know this news came out, it immediately shot up to the to the to, uh, top of the Amazon sales charts. This yeah. might actually end up being the best selling Bayonetta. <laughs> Best marketing campaign. Shit on it until you sell. That it just like um, shoot yourself in the foot. You know, yeah, like 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 the time when um the Swedish government ransacked Torin Pirate Bay. When they ransacked it, Torin Pirate Bay went up like the site crashed because everybody was downloading more than ever. <laughs> so you did them a favor. Yeah, I never. And, oh, go ahead. And and it's it's ridiculous because it's like okay, my opinion about the whole thing was. It's one of those he said she said bullshit, yeah. and then, and then, and then, as soon as you find out the real truth, you're like, oh, the company was right all along. But the way the company helped, um, the the main person of the company, the way he handled the situation, made it worse. It made him look guilty, and it sucks because it's like if he didn't do any of that kid kiddish shit, they would have been fine. People were gonna find out the truth anyways, like everybody does. Like Kotaku, surprisingly, Kotaku of all places. Found Actually, out the it wasn't truth. Kotaku; it was an ex Kotaku guy. Okay, good. Thank God. Although uh, Jason Schreer is a piece of shit because he uh, he he knew about all the fucked up, gross shit that was going on in Activision at the time, and he sat on that story. Oh yeah, just like a real journalism does. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's what they all do, dude. Well, so he 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 was playing his part right. Well, he was basically he 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 did exactly what he's supposed to do. Let's be real, Kotaku writers aren't real journalists. Yeah, that's true. That's true too. The, so uh, the the point is, it's 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 great that the the truth came out. Everything got cleared up. She fucked up badly, but she ruined it for the next set of people who are voice acting. And now because of this whole controversy and everything. Who knows? Bayonetta might get a shit ton of um, sales because of this. She also guaranteed that Jennifer Hale is going to be Bayonetta going forward. Yeah, and she's not a bad Bayonetta either. I like her voice, to be honest. Yeah, I really like her. Uh, like, I, she, I thought she was a really good fit. Like, it wasn't a bad uh, choice to go with. But see, I never really jump on these boycott bandwagons. It's the same thing with not like me neither. when Wooly was virtue signaling and cr- bitching about S and K getting home being owned by Saudi Arabia. It's like, because at the end of the day, you're punishing the developers for shit that they have no control over. And and I, it's even worse when you're like Wooly being a hypocrite. He still bought the fucking game and playing it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I saw I saw he was still playing KOF 15 after all the shit he said. But It's like, dude, make up your mind. Play it or not. You can't have, you can't do both. Like, Matt's well aware of the Saudi shit, but he never say that. He just plays it. Because at the end of the day, you have to realize that there's no such thing as ethical consumerism. All money's dirty. All money comes yeah. from fucked up sources. Guess what? You yeah. know, everyone's excited about Street Fighter Six. Hey, we are too. Guess what? The Saudi prince owns stake in Capcom too. Yep. Yeah. He owns stake. You like the yacht? You like the Yakuza series from Sega? Well, you know you know who's their backers, right? Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. But I'm okay with that. <laughs> I got nothing against that. <laughs> that makes the game more fun. Um, so, but the point is, it's like, the point is, why are you punishing yourself and the people that work for these games? Why do that? Yeah, like, again, what's the point? Because I don't like this whole, like, peer pressuring someone to boycott and something. I always got annoyed when, like, every time I would see new SK news, there had to be some dickwad going, Well, you, like, you, uh, well, you know, fuck it, uh, uh, the, the Saudi prince owns SK. And it's like, dude, 
I just let me just be happy about 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 my main getting into KOF. Like, and yeah, it's, it's the whole thing. Like, it it kind of put a bit of a damper on the game. Now the hype's back up because a lot of people. I, I have a friend who's like, he just wanted this whole bullshit to be behind him because he's like, look, I already put money into this. I've been waiting for this for five years of Kamiya just dicking us around and not telling us anything. I've been waiting for this game. I want to fucking play this. And I don't blame people. And I didn't blame people who didn't want to cancel their pre-order when this shit happened. But it again, like no, nobody came out looking good in this. Uh, and I think at the, if uh, if you're gonna, I think the the moral of the story is that if you're gonna make claims, you better have the fucking receipts to back it up. Yep. But also pay your fucking voice actors. Pay your pay your fucking voice actors. Give them credit. Give them what and they're discuss fucking deals. Owed. Yeah, give them and you know make a fair deal with them. Like yeah, especially if it's like someone who's like been voicing a character for like a decade or 20 years or whatever it's like when they they're practically are that character don't just kick them to the fucking curb you know like treat treat them like you would a big hollywood actor because more than anything people would know the voice more than the than the face it's like look at fucking the actor of optimus prime as soon as you hear that fucker talk it's like oh shit we know who that is yeah there's peter cullen's voice is iconic and it yeah. really, he got I, fucked over too. I think that uh, they, yeah. he had the coach someone to sound like him, but he didn't get to be Optimus Prime. And it's even more fucked when you find out that his Optimus Prime voice was based on his older brother, Larry, who was like a Vietnam veteran. He was his hero. But his brother, yeah, Larry, that, told him, like, you have to be like, you'll be strong but gentle, be the type of hero that you want to be. Like, oh, well, I'm going to be you. So it's even more yeah. fucked up when he gets fucked. We cheated out of that, and he asked to like coach someone to do his voice. So, yeah, it's a big clusterfuck. But hey, Banner Three looks good, and I'm already seeing games journalists. Uh, well, it's getting good reviews, but then I'm seeing games journalists. Who, it's kind of funny, you know. Like, you, you remember there are people. Oh man, Banner that is made for the male gaze. It's sexualizing women, even though like it was dis- she was designed by a female artist. But it's like, oh, it's made for the and- male gaze. Now they're mad that Bayonetta doesn't have a gay sex scene at the end with her sister. And then I saw this one Ooh. Kotaku writer saying, "How could straight men find Bayonetta attractive?" Really? Like, okay. You know the point of Bayonetta is actually feminist power, right? But in a cool way. That's the whole point of Bayonetta. It's, it's, it's the p- a woman can be both strong and sexy at the same time. I know, crazy. Because the idea of Bayonetta, okay, so the idea of Bayonetta is she's using everything she has that count, counting her body. Sex is a weapon, and she does that up to the nines. That's the point. But she doesn't fucking make that as her like identity and shit. You're supposed to relate to the character of how badass she is, how fun, how she doesn't take herself seriously. She's fun. She's outgoing. That's why I like when they do the cutscenes of her shopping or her hanging out. She's like she knows how to have fun in her off time, but when there's danger of fun, she's like, well, time to bring out the guns and my sex appeal and get to work. Like she's the ultimate male version of Dante, a uh, female version of Dante, yeah. and that's the cool part about her. Like this is how a female Dante will be. It's kind of funny how you know for years journalists were like, oh man, Ben, and so they demonize it for being you know for sexualizing women. Now they're mad that there's no gay sex scene at the end. Like, what is it? Are you mad for 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 being sexualized, or, or are you angry because? Because uh, they didn't sexualize it enough. You can't have your cake and eat it too. For me, when I think of stuff like that, I just cut to that scene from the Simpson of the dude from Eat Your Scratch. He's like, you, can't, you you don't know what you want. You're chilling. You're stupid. And, it, and then it makes Ralph cry. That's literally that in a nutshell. <laughs> uh, but hey, it's getting good reviews. And again, if Kotaku writers hate it, that means the game is good. That that's yeah. that's the measure. That that's how you know. 
That's how you know. If I I and G or Kotaku hate it, IGN. it must be good. IGN. It must be good. I I and G's like the shattered glass alternate universe website in another dimension that's actually there and bounce <laughs> and they actually love Sonic games. I wish I was in that world. <laughs> uh all right. So again, like just like how a lot of Bayonetta fans just wanted that shit behind. They just want to play their game. We're gonna put that shit behind us. We we're on to the main event. And I'm gonna actually Man, let ooh. I'm gonna let you take it over, but I am gonna I am gonna go by each one in order. But I'll, I'll let but since you're you're way more familiar with, with this series than I am. All right. Uh, so before we talk any of the new games, let's give out a little history lesson. Because there's some people who might not know it, and it's kind of weird when I do come across those people who do not know this. To be fair, it's been dead for years. To no fault of its own. It's like, yeah, I I don't blame people for not knowing what it is. No, no, the thing is, I actually come across... Okay, this doesn't pertain to Silent Hill, but I do have to bring this out as a little uh, measuring of how the new generation is different from us. My boss is 24. He's fucking young. He looks like he looks like Bill from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, by the way. That's the cool part. So I'm like, I let that go because he looks like him. Literally, he wears the hat backwards. He has the same curly hair and shit. The only weird thing about it is when he talks, he sounds like that uh, kindergarten teacher from Close Enough. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, that's pretty funny, too. And the thing that really throws me off, too, he's like, he's a super Christian boy. But, but. He actually believes in science and reads books. So that throws me off. <laughs> like, you're a walking contradictory, and that's awesome. I'm glad I'm working. I'm glad you're my boss. Like, I don't mind if a young, a young shot punk is my boss. But if they're like that, that's cool. So this is how the difference between our generation and their generation. I'm using this to get to the setup of the history. This guy has never seen America History X. And I'm like, how can you not see that movie? And he's like, oh, I'm 24. And I don't think schools were allowed to play that anymore. I'm like, what? It's a good movie about racism. About you are con- people will be conditioned to be a racist. But it's not by the figure. It's by older figureheads that do it. And you realize if you don't change your attitude, it might be too late. That's the point of American History X. So I got him watching it, and he was shocked. He's like, holy shit. I should have saw this when I was in high school. Yeah, no shit, huh? <laughs> uh, the thing that, of course, bugged him out was the rape scene and the prison scene. And I'm like, that's fair. That's fucking fair, because that shit was a little too graphic, even for me. Uh, but the point is, so Silent Hill, a lot of young kids today only heard about it because it's a movie or... Dead by Daylight brought it back to life. That's the cool thing. Or you, Dead by Daylight kept it alive. Or you'll hear the, or you'll hear the, the, uh, the, the anguish of many, uh, many Silent Hill fans just screaming at Konami, especially after the yeah. way they fucked over uh, PT. Yeah. So Silent Hill was created, and the original team and the original people made it just basically bounced off and left after the whole PT situation. And the creator himself is making a new IP that feels very Silent Hill-ish, but in his own take, and it's great. He even got the music composer to do it too, to work with him for that, because they're like they're 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 really buddy buddy. Like whatever he does, he'll follow. Oh yeah. Vice versa. So Silent Hill. When I heard about being used for it, I was like, you know what, Pachico Machine, right? Glorify Pachico Street, right? That's, Let's go. It's all you would. Yeah, it's immediately where your mind goes. Like when I heard that Konami was renewing the trademark for Bloody Roar, I knew it was going to be nothing. But my first, it's, it's going to be Pachinko. And then I remember there's like, there's this dude on YouTube or uh, YouTube. It's like the, he's just doing the FTC that pushes Bloody Roar. He says, "No, no, look, see, I have the fucking." And he actually showed like I guess the copyright or whatever documents. He's like, "See, it's for whatever goods. It's not Pachinko. It's not Pachinko." And he's like, "Oh, you're all fucking idiots for thinking it's Pachinko." No, we're not. We're being realistic because that's all Konami does. You can't fault people. Yeah. For for so it's not. We're not trying to be pessimistic. It's just that's just how it is. You just the, it, occasionally they'll do a collection, and the collections will be good, but they'll just 
Sheriff just do more pachinko. So yeah, I don't blame everyone for thinking, oh, this is not going to be anything new. This is going to be a pachinko game. And, and for me, when I heard about Silent Hill um, stream, the stream news happening, I was like, chances are it's going to be a pachinko machine or a collection again. And their first collection didn't do so good. The HD Master Collection that remade 2, 3, and 4. No, and it, was, was like, it was just 2 and 3. Oh, two or three. Yeah, and that was a shit start. Just like the voice acting, it was bad because they replaced the voice acting. They rewrote the script like they shouldn't have. And on top of that, they didn't have the original source code or the dev kits. They had to remake it from the last build. And the funny thing about the last build was it was dated five months before the game was made. So there was a lot of stuff missing. And the way they rebuilt the game was they had to get a PlayStation 2, buy the, the copies of those two games, or oh, find their copies of those two games, or buy. For, no economy, I feel like they actually had to go buy their own games because they <laughs> tossed everything out. So they had to rebuy the games and get one poor intern to play every single level bit by bit in writing notes. And I bet you they were like, these notes are like giant Bible-sized notes telling them like, okay, so this is the texture, this is the, this is how it was played, this is this and this and that. And I'm like, that's how you make a game the wrong way. Like, you had to reverse engineer a finished game, and you still made it wrong. That is a new record, Konami. How can you, like, reverse engineer a game and still get it wrong? It... So my my hopes and dreams for Silent Hill were dead, like always, because it's like it's a franchise series that it never really got a good fair shake. Sometimes, like a lot of people will play it and they never quite understand it. Like only the hardcore the hardcore fans will understand the game and what's it about. But for when it comes to a casual player or a mainstream player, they're like, I don't get it, and it's like that sucks. Perfect case in point is Silent Hill Five. That's the one that actually divided the fans in half, and the new and the new new B fans, because a lot of people don't know. I like Silent Hill Five. Yes, I know it was made by a a, a a Western company, and the gameplay does suck. But the thing was, it's a love letter to the thing that inspired Silent Hill, Jacob's Ladder. It's so when I tell Silent Hill fans, if you really hate Five. You shouldn't even, you shouldn't even like, you shouldn't even like Silent Hill in general because without Jacob's Ladder, without this being the inspiration of Silent Hill, you'll never get all these Silent Hill games. And 5 is a love letter to Jacob's Ladder, down to a T, even down to the ending. So it was pretty cool having that. So I like it because of the story parts of it. Um... So with Silent Hill, it's one of those franchises like it's a it has a cult following. It's been loved a lot, just like Resident Evil and Parasite Eve and what's another horror fan? Oh, Fatal Fatal Frame, like that. It's up. It's exactly up there with them. And yeah, um, the first thing I want to talk about is Silent Hill F. That one really got me going. Yeah. So, uh, Silent Hill F is uh, it's a sp- it's a spinoff being set in 1960s Japan. And um, the the writer is a guy named Ryukishi 07. I, um, I had to look up this guy up because a lot of people who knew this guy up were like, oh, fuck. You know, they're, they're hyped. Yeah. And then you have. I was hyped. <laughs> but then you get like, I saw the video where it's like Max Abilian and it's like, oh, why does this guy put his gamer tag? Who's this? And. Or like fucking, or like, and even, it's always a dumb white boy too. Yeah, he, they always or, say shit. Or like, like look, I love Vinny from Vine Sauce, but he he's like, who is this? And then people say he's from anime. Well, I didn't know. It's like, but it's it, it was just kind of funny to see people act that way. It was like, uh, but uh, it, this dude, I guess he wrote. It just. Oh, go ahead. Oh, but it does show that who doesn't do their research. That's the problem. Yeah. Like. I know they were. I know. I know Max and some people were doing a live stream, like you know, reaction in real time streams. Because I done that too. Like I did it for Sony State of Play once. I did. I I recorded myself, reaction myself in real time. But it's like, for something like that, you should keep your mouth shut and do the research before you say something stupid. 
so because that's how you that's how you get attacked. Yeah. So this dude, he uh, he's written like visual novels, and a lot of his stuff is dealt with like psychological and supernatural horror and gore. So uh, he he's worked on a uh, when they cry, Higarashi, Umineko. So he was like a really good choice for that game, but. Out of all, yeah, he. I'm again. I'm I'm a Silent Hill virgin. I'm not really uh, too familiar with the series. I'm and I'm, so, I'm not normally into like survival horror. It's just not my genre. But I do think out of all the stuff that they announced, that uh, aside from the movie, that was the most interesting one. And the cool thing about it is, I'm glad they got him to write it because I read his stuff. He knows how to write for a character and you feel like exactly how that person feels at that moment in the book like he knows how to describe he knows how to write in full detail of the feelings and the fears of what's going on in the pages like you actually can feel that person's anxiety you can feel that exact person's um stress um depression all that you can actually feel the same emotions of the character you read on the book so him writing that for Silent Hill is perfect. Like, so he knows how to write. He knows the the subject matter, because the point of Silent Hill is everybody's personal hell, and he knows how to write that already. Every book is is like a, a personal hell, but it's like the way he writes it though, so it won't get stagnant or bored or cut a cookie cutter copy. Is he writes the subject matter around the theme of the subject matter like like a like um i could give out an example like if the if the detective story is about a murderer that's killing prostitutes and the story is about not you're not reading about the detective you're literally actually reading about the prostitute that knows about this going on but you have no choice to keep working knowing that the killer's still out there and having that fear and anxiety of doing your normal night walker job. And it sucks. And it really does put the fear into it. So him getting that concept of feel in the environment is perfect. And he's great at it. And the way he describes the, the kills. I, I I have to admit. I did almost threw up a couple times. Because he does go a little too far on the details. So that trailer when that chick's face fell off. I'm like nope. He he got it. There there was some people who were like, ugh, oh, yeah. that, that's a little much. That was like, vile and disgusting, but I felt that was perfect for that. And yeah, you know, it's I do know that like a lot of Silent Hills are cut more. They're set in the U.S., so it's kind of cool to have one set in Japan, especially in the '60s. You don't really see a lot of you don't see a '60s Japan setting in video games. No, you don't. And it's cool that it takes place in Japan because I want to see what's going to be the personal hell for that character. Like, what was her deal being in the being dragged to Silent Hill? And, because that's the point of Silent Hill. You're dragged to your own personal hell. And you know they got like a Japanese doll, which is prominent in there. And uh, they they also have a uh, uh, like uh, plants, flower plants and flowers are pretty much like key symbols in this. Yeah. So you got the red weeds and everything. So it's like, okay, so I guess I guess it's gonna be about roots, like the roots of something, like the roots of family family drama tra- uh, trauma or something. Like but we know the roots are are, are gonna symbolize something. Because everything in Silent Hill, there's always something symbolizing it. Like like for Silent Hill five homecoming, it was about bro- about your brother. So you realize, okay, it's about family. Silent Hill Two was about um, your wife. It's it's about relationships and and um, the couples and something with that diary. What did you do to what did you really do to your wife in in real life? Um, Silent Hill One was about was about your child. So so something about mother mothering or or stuff like that. Like it relates to a theme. And he, all I have to say is it's in safe hands with him. Like you're not you're not have to worry about him but the other one i'm worried about the 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 one i'm not looking forward to to be and honest this is, is the, this was the big one oh yeah it's the remake of two and i'm not looking forward to it to be honest yeah which which sucks because you would think that a big remake of two would everyone would be super hyped about that 
and it's anti-hype because of who who is involved. I mean, the bright side, they got the original art director who did like the monster designs, and they got the composer involved. But the, and that's the thing that kind of sucks because they need those two actually should be hands on more. Yeah, well, the one they also need a better team. They do because uh, so I'm not familiar with Bluebird team, but from everyone's reaction, I assume that they're not a. <laughs> They have a really bad track record. Yeah, they do because they don't know how to program. They don't know how to write. And when it comes to um, describing mental illness, they are way off base. <laughs> yeah, because I remember hearing in the, in the media they, they villainize an, an abuse victim. Yeah. And yeah, maybe they're not the best ones to have the the handle a series that deals with like psychological trauma. And and the thing that really I wasn't really looking forward to it is they already had a remake. I wanted one to be remade. One is a lot like uh Co Veronica where it deserves a remake way more than the more popular entry. Yeah, because everybody loves to like every, every okay. When you talk to most Silent Hill fans, their favorite is automatically default two. I get it. Don't don't get me wrong. It's a really good story. I love the story myself, but I can never really relate to the subject matter because that's like basically if you ever bid on a girl, or you ever fell for a girl like that hard. I get it. Like that's a great story, and I understand it. But it's also the origin story. Spoiler: alert, This game's really old. It's he becomes Pyramid Head. So yeah, that's that's the cool thing about the story is he, James it becomes Pyramid Head, and it's that's the point of it. Just like the dude from Five. Another spoiler: alert, He's also Pyramid Head. But his reason of being Pyramid Head actually makes more sense than James. But play the games yourself to get to to understand why. But I'm not looking forward to it because I don't like the team. I like what they did so far, but I have to I have to counteract that with the fan made version of two. I the fan made version did a lot more better than the the company did so far. I I think I mean it, it would also probably be best to to wait and see what like people say when they actually get it in their hands. I think yeah. that'll be the final decision maker. I did see like, yeah, they're they're gonna make it over the shoulder, they're gonna tweak the gameplay. Cause yeah, you know, it's a PS2 game. You gotta you obviously you gotta make some quality well, of life change. That's well the thing is if they do it over the shoulder, it's gonna ruin some of the storytelling. Oh yeah. Because there's some camera angles that were meant for story plot device. Like example, when Pyramid Head grabs the four legged creature. He's actually fucking raping that thing, and the camera angle of the original shows it in a way that it does show that, without showing it, like a silhouette of of the movement. And you're like, oh, that's what he's doing. Oh, that's what he's fucking doing. And, but the the way they showed it in the trailer, it's like, there he's not doing it. He's just grabbing the legs and pinning her down. That's it. And like you, that's suggestive. Like, oh, he's gonna do it, but it's not gonna show you that he's doing it. You know, so. So having that third person camera angle like Resident Evil is not a good way to go about this game. Because there's a reason why a fixed camera angle for this game works. Especially the elevator scene. There's a there's a moment in the part of the game that you write the elevator and this creepy circus announcer tells you what's gonna happen next, but the camera is so high up on the elevator, it feels James is small and the walls are closing in every time you use the elevator. It gets you that feel of anxiety of the walls are closing in every time you use the elevator. So because it's going to be a third person angle, it's going to get rid of that tension and and that anxiety out. So like like I do agree with you, you have to wait and see. But still, like you're going to ruin some of the stories, like some of the parts of the stories like that. Did you see, uh, did you hear about uh, the art director's, uh, he, so he responded to a big popular, he shot down a big popular fan theory. You, you hear about this? No. What was the popular fan theory? So you know how like in the opening when James is looking in the mirror, the, the, the theory is that he's not looking at himself, he's looking at you, the player? Oh, that was dumb. I I heard about that. I thought it was stupid. Well, guess what? Masahiro Ito thinks it's stupid too, because he thank God he said 
Uh, I, I have his Twitter right now. He said, so many people have asked me, but it's a it's headcanon. James does not look at the player. I'm so fed up with this. In the first place, why does he have to see the player who exists in and out of the story? He's now there looking for his wife. Consider the context of the story. Yeah, because, cause, okay, for me, what I when you play the game again after knowing the true ending, he's looking at his fucking cracked soul. That's the point. He's he's fucked. He's and it's not his cracked soul he's looking at. It's his wife's cracked soul because his wife's personality is split into three in the game. Okay, because if you watch the opening of Silent Hill two, the actual opening, there's the little girl. There's the there's the wife. There's the uh, Maria the in her sexy red outfit, and there's the other girl. Those are the different personalities of his wife. He's so the crack window represents the crack personality of his wife. That's the point. So when people when people said that to me once or once, I was like, "Shut the fuck up! That's not what it's about." <laughs> like you're you're that dumb. Like that's the that's the mainstream audience who don't really get Silent Hill. No offense, guys, but that's what you know. It's like. That that's cute. Those, Go sit down. Those are people that try to be way too deep with like the, the lore that they built up in their head. Yeah. I, well, and the thing is, we're not the only si- Silent Hill... dubs, the, the art director agrees with you. Yeah. And the thing is, Silent Hill 2 is not that hard to read. It's very simple. Like, I don't know how everybody came up with that theory, but that game is actually straightforward. It's to be honest. It's like the people who read way too deep into the religious imagery in Evangelion, and they think, "Oh man, this is a brilliant commentary on uh, on religion." And all it was was just Ano really, really liked that one episode of Ultraman Ace where all the Ultra Brothers are t- are crucified, and he's, yeah. he's like, "Man, that's so fucking cool. I'm adding that to uh, I'm adding that to my to my show." <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> no, like um, no, and yeah, it had no religious connotations. He just thought that shit looked sick as fuck. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, um, um, the only thing I'm worried about this now more so than ever is the story might be changed again. Like they're gonna do their own rewrites. The, like, okay. So, when it comes to video game rewrites, when it comes to something like Resident Evil. I'm okay with Resident Evil getting rewritten shorter because it's a game that you already know inside out from the old days. Like Resident Evil 3. Resident Evil 3 is an eight-hour game if you beat it fast enough or four four hours. Depends how good you are. I'm glad that Resident Evil 3 got shorter because I was not willing to play eight hours of Nemesis. So I'm glad that they cut some of the forms down and I'm glad that the ending changed. But... The ending still felt like the old ending too, so I'm okay with that. And um, in Resident Evil 2, they even shortened that because technically Resident Evil 2 is a 12-hour game because each version of Resident Evil 2, you got Leon side A, side B, Claire side A, and side B. Each of those are four hours. Together, that's 12 hours. So I'm glad that they shortened that down to eight hours. But with something like Silent Hill having that that storytelling, that deep ass storytelling about him and his wife and all that other stuff, I'm afraid they're gonna rewrite it again to make it shorter, and it's not gonna work. It needs to be long. The camera angles need to be there for story reasons. Um, the music, of course, needs to be there. the 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 art direction needs to be there. Like, like I'm not asking for a cookie cutter copy of two of the original two from PlayStation 2 in the Xbox one. I'm just saying that you need to rewrite it in a way that doesn't mess up the original source material, but not to be different as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like maybe like a fresh coat of paint type of feel. Like it could be the same color of paint, but it needs to look fresher. There is ways you can retell that story without destroying the old stuff. There's games that have done it. Look at, um, Crash Bandicoot, um, the remake. They still kept the same story, but they added a lot of new things to it that worked. Um, uh, Crash Team Racing, same, almost the same game, but they added some stuff from Nitro, and it worked. Um, Spyro as well. 
um, Tony Hawk, especially Tony Hawk, they were able to put one and two together like they did in the Xbox One, but they threw in old skateboarders with the new skateboarders of today. Something like that. Like, keep the old, but also be its own new thing. It's kind of hard to do that. It's hard. It's kind of hard to be in that balanced middle. So, all I ask for is, really, really, really f- don't fuck around with that shit too much. And I know this company, they might do that. Because they don't have a good track record with their games and their writing staff. So, I'm not looking forward to it. And like I said, one should have been the one that should have got remade. The most. Yeah, again, it... it, it... It does, and again, I, I'm just looking at this as an outsider, but it does suck that here's a series that's been long neglected that people re- really been, you know, demanding to come back. And, you know, what, you know, a fan, a beloved fan favorite is getting a remake. This should be the hypest moment, and just getting the worst possible people attached to it just killed that. And it sucks. Cause it'd be like, yeah. it, it'd be like if, um, fuck, like, I'm trying to think of a really shitty uh, fighting game developer right now, but you know, it's be, it'd be like if Capcom finally brought back Dark Soccer's, but they gave it to the most unqualified team ever. Yep, yeah, it'll be like that. And to get rid of this sour taste in my mouth, the third side of the hell game they're working on. It is a Western company, but. I have so much faith in them because I never thought these guys were ever going to get a big IP like this right after their last big IP. It's the people who did Stray. And I'm like, it, whoa. I guess it's a joint production between them and another developer. But if 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 they let, if they let the t- company Stray be in charge of the wheel, it will be great because all I'm saying is if you haven't played Stray, you guys really got to play it. Like, I will never give you the ending on that game. I will never spoil that ending. Because it's an emotion roller coaster game. And you really got to play it. Now, it's... You will feel for that fucking cat. So, we don't know too much about... It's called Silent Hill uh, Townfall. Uh, we don't really yeah. know too much about it, but... Uh, it'll be nice. I I do kind of need to see more, but I am kind of interested because uh, uh, because of the people involved. Yeah, and these guys know how to write for emotion. Like, like, okay, there's like people who can write write about emotion. The people who wrote Stray know how to be emotion. That's the thing, and that's very hard to do in games. Like, to really feel for a character. Like, a handful of games have done that. Like, something like Shadow of Colossus could do it. Did it. I, uh, Ico did it. Um, Spider-Man did it. it. Stray is just like... All I'm saying is, like, Stray needs to be Game of the Year this year. And if it doesn't, fuck y'all. <laughs> Literally. Like, I don't give a fuck about those Elder... Um, What's that fucking Bloodborne wannabe game that's out right now? Uh, oh, what is uh? What? You know their 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 latest um their latest fucking um their latest fucking um oh, Dark Souls game. Oh, it's not El- Dark Souls. Elden so. Ring. Yeah, fuck those guys. Like, no offense, that's a good game. But go back, bring back Armored Core. Yeah. Go back to making mecha games. But Stray really deserves Game of the Year. Like, really. Like, the story was great, the gameplay was great, the feel of it was great. Like, Jesus Christ, even the animation was too good for its own good. Like, they literally animate that fucking cat perfectly. And they didn't have to. And, um, yeah, that team did a great job of knowing how to write a story without words. in a, Per se, like, the main character is a cat, of course he's not going to be able to talk. It's your robot that does the talking for you. He's, but he has fact, more like, charisma than the entire cast of Last of Us, though. It's way, yeah. way, way, I feel way more for this cat than I ever did for anyone in The Last of Us. Fuck yeah. So, so I feel like if I've seen gameplay footage of this game, or at least the story about this one, I'll be more at ease. Because I know I'm okay with this company doing it, doing a Silent Hill game. But I want to see more. I want to see what they could do with it. That's what I'm saying. I want to see their take on a story. 
All right. But that teaser trailer gave out a lot, though. Like, I, so, like, that teaser, I do have to admit, that teaser trailer gave out a lot. It showed the map of the town. It showed the people who are in that town. No, it did. It was, so that, it was just, it wasn't just, just like some, some no, it, it was it, like a dude it, on a radio. It was a recording? Yeah, it was a dude on a radio and it had a map. Oh, okay. I, I don't remember yeah, that. The map, I, I just remembered, like, the dude in, uh, on the radio or whatever. Yeah, there's a map. Okay. There's a map on the table and it's showing that there must because a lot of people don't know that the first Silent Hill also did a cover up. So this might be another cover up story game, just like the first. And that's cool. So I can't wait for that. Or it might be something else. So the dude on the radio might be the key. Like I just basically just give me a video. That's just give me a goddamn video to see what I'm looking forward to. And then uh, uh yeah, there's a few other small things like uh they're they're also gonna be doing like a like an interactive streaming uh thing. So my guess is probably gonna be like um oh god, what was that dark mirror thing called? It was on Netflix. Oh, you mean the people who did not just, oh yeah, Black Mirror. No, but it was uh the interactive one. Oh, um Bandersnatch. Yeah, it's Bandersnatch or that New Day Halloween special, stuff like that. Uh, I th I think they're gonna take cues and A's from the people who did Until Dawn. That company did interactive gameplay. Like you don't even have to have a controller. You just have to download the app on your phone and select the um uh, what they should do next with the game. So I feel like it's gonna be one of those. Like you're gonna have your friends to decide like what's gonna happen next type of deal. It's gonna be a party game, but with Silent Hill. So then. Now this this next one is awesome. Uh, oh, I'll, dude, I'm so glad. So again, uh, I'll let you uh, take it away. So the context of this is, um, if no one has seen the first Silent Hill movie, go watch it because the director is back for the sequel, and I do mean sequel because that other Silent Hill movie does not exist. I don't know what people are talking about. I don't know what you mean by 3D. They've only uh, made one movie. Yeah, they only made one movie. So if someone tells you that there's a 3D Silent Hill movie, they're wrong. Maybe they might be mistaking that about the, I don't know, the 3D effects of the first one. I mean, they're, but, they're probably high. Yeah, they're probably high or they're just misleading that. So the director who did the first movie is back. Um, I'm afraid to pronounce his name because I always botch foreigners' names badly. <laughs> like if you want a white person to ruin other people's names. I'm your guy. <laughs> Hold on, um, I'll look it up. See if I could. Uh, yeah, I'll, you could. You could pronounce it oh, better than me. Christoph uh, Gans or Christoph Gans. Okay. Christoph. Yeah, Christoph. Yeah. So, Christoph was the director of the first Silent Hill game. But the thing that made him great was he's actually a fan of the game. And when he got to direct the first game, he already knew about it because he played it first a long time ago. He's like, oh shit, I'm directing this? Okay, I'm in. I know what to do. And he did change some of the story around for the better, for, for, the mov for a movie. Because in the original part one of the game, was it wasn't a cult. It wasn't a witch-burning sacrifice type of deal. It was drugs. It was literally fucking drugs and hallucination and psychedelics. So he's like, that's not going to work for a movie. Let's make it actual witches, cults, and shit like that. Boom. Done. Um, Let's change the main character from being a father to a mother because a mother will do anything for her child. That works for a movie. Um... They, they got the right actresses and actors for it. They got the tone of the... They got the tone of the game down perfectly. The 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 the, the cycle, you know, from from ashy day to hell night tone when you hear the siren. The the characters were spot on. The effects were spot on. Everything was spot on. He knew exactly what the audience wanted, and he knew exactly what the fans wanted, and the mainstream audience could see. He threw in some characters. He did some weak tweaks, like Pyramid Head, instead of being like this fat fat butcher he made him into like this seven foot adonis motherfucker with a giant buster sword and it works perfectly for that um, later versions of pyramid had that version 
Yeah, the, actually, they did a mixture of the two. They kept that buff seven. They kept that overgrown Chad, but they throw in an apron over him. Like, that's a fair compromise. I know some of you don't like the new one. I'll do you a fair compromise. He'll look like the Chad still, but we'll give him that that shitty apron on top. Like, that's a fair compromise. Uh, they threw in some other villains that are not meant to be in the first game. They threw in um, the nurses and that that creature with his legs bended forward in the toilet, the janitor. So I'm like, that's pretty cool because those were technically two and three monsters. So he knew how to balance it right for everybody. He, he threw in some, some, fan, some fan service for, uh, for uh, Silent Hill fans. Yeah. So... So him, so him being a director again, and I do like to make this joke because he did he was in jail for coke possession. So I feel like Konami waiting for him to get out so he could direct the next one. Like like we gotta wait till he gets out of jail before we, prison until we do the next one because we know we tried with this other pretend guy on an old on a fake movie that didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't work. So, seeing that video of him talking about the second movie, about him making part two as a movie, and they're already in, they're already so far in in post production, like they haven't recorded anything. But after him telling us what he wants, what he wants, storyboards to go with it, the monsters, and all that other stuff, it's like no, he exactly knows exactly knows how to write it for a movie. He knows how to get the story to be told in a in a big screen point of view. He's like, I'm glad they got him because it sometimes it takes a fan to write something for for what they want to see. Like something like James Gunn. Like James Gunn's a fan of B and C list heroes. That's why you got Suicide Squad. And Guardians of the ass. Galaxy. Guardians Galaxy. Yeah. So so Crystal doing it again is gonna be great. I hope it's great because if he does this perfectly, dude, I can't wait for him to do part three. The actual real part three. It also, not that not that uh, imaginary one that doesn't exist. It also sh- shows it also further proves why remaking two is pointless when we're already getting a movie based off of two. It is. It's like, dude, like like two is a good story to tell as a movie itself. It's like like I don't I don't know why like I understand like I do understand why fans like two it's a great story but for me it's like one needs to be remade because two already got a remake three got a remake where the fuck is two hell to be honest I would like to have four remade even though it's not the greatest one out of the bunch but I want to see what they could do to fix it well it's the same reason why people want Devil May Cry 2 remade they yeah. they want a good version yeah so so the Silent Hill thing was great. Like there were some ups and downs for it. I'm just excited for. I'm just excited for F. I'm excited for that one from the from the company that did Stray, and I'm excited for the movie. So, so I can wait. So basically, I'm not a big fan of like the two remake. Everything, and everything else but two. <laughs> everything else but two, and. And it's the sad thing is there's already a remake out there by the fans that made a better too. They got the PC port of it. They cleaned up everything. They're, they even added extra option options to change the filter, the lighting, the graphics, and etc. Extra stuff that you don't really need for this, but it's for the better. They even fixed the ratio of the of of the cutscenes because the ratio was bad for some reason, but they actually got into proper. Six by six by nine, sixteen by nine, and they got the game to run from thirty FPS to sixty FPS clean, without skipping or frame dropping or or uh, glitchiness. And on top of that, they're working on remaking the bonus content too, because on the PC version, it's just exactly like the PlayStation Two version. It's just the first story. It didn't get. It doesn't have all that bonus stuff like the Xbox version does. They're adding the Xbox stuff to the PC one, and that's cool. Like that's a lot of coding for that. So, if you want to play that one, just look for it on YouTube. The remake of the fan remake of two, and it's the same people who are actually doing the fan remake of one. So, and the one is pretty trippy too, because they actually had to rip all the stuff off from the PlayStation game 
and it's going to be able to be playable on a PlayStation emulator. So that 700 megabyte game is going to be like a 5 gigabyte game because of all the new textures and stuff. So they're going to really push the PS1 version like crazy, but the Silent Hill stuff was great. Like I fucking I fucking loved everything of it except for the remake of 2. Not really happy about it because it doesn't need it. And on top of that, the movie's coming out. So fuck it. So what was your your what was your take on two stuff? Uh, so I I have seen I I have watched the first movie with you. Uh, um, wait, did we ever get that? Com is that commentary check still up or did it get taken down? It got taken down. All right. Well, boy, but now because of the new YouTube rules, we can redo it again. All right. Cool. Yeah. So we watched it with. Uh, we watched it with a friend of the show, uh, Gamer Pie. It was, uh, we did a commentary track, and I liked the first movie. Uh, so, uh, and again, I'm a Silent Hill virgin. I so, but yeah. I enjoyed it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to to the second one. And again, like you can tell, the dude actually gets it. Silent Hill is, is right. Uh, I know it's like right up there with um, Sonic One and Two, Mortal Kombat, and Detective Pikachu is like the best uh, video game movies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because it's like because it's directed by a fan like who already played the games when he got the like when he got the role or the part not the part I mean when he got the job like he's like oh shit I'm directing this or oh, exactly I know what I could do that's why it's it's I know like not in all cases but at least I am happy uh, for for everything like uh for, for everything like the Netflix Resident Evil or the Paramount Plus Halo you'll get. Uh, you'll get like a Sonic Two or or, or a fucking uh, Detective Pikachu. Yeah, it's 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 like, like I don't I never quite understand how can you fuck up from the source material. Like, yeah, sometimes the source material is boring, but you could you could spice it up a bit. Like these directors who did Silent Hill or or Mortal Kombat. Like you could spice it up a bit. Like you know, there's nothing wrong changing a few things if it doesn't go way too far from the source material like 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 um the Mortal Kombat like they went a little bit over the top sometimes but it worked because it is Mortal Kombat well, so it is meant to go some that of the direction. changes in the first Mortal Kombat movie actually ended up influencing the series as a whole cuz yeah. you know Kano went from being like some some like white half Japanese dude to being Australian cuz they fucking loved the 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 actor to play him in the movie and that dude was awesome uh, Sh Shang Tsung. I mean, they brought back Terry, uh, Kerry Tagawa to play Shang Tsung because that dude is Shang Tsung. Yeah, and and hell, Johnny even... Cage's personality is directly taken from the movies. Yeah, there's there's cases that you know the live action movie will influence the games now, and it's cool to see that. But it's like when you have a property, it's like. How hard is it to make it into a movie? Like, like example, like Doom. Doom is kind of a hard sell to make into a movie sometimes because everybody's like, we're really going to watch a guy killing demons of hell for two hours straight. Yes and no. It's like, okay, him, him having the rabbit is a cool story. I like that. He did it all for his rabbit. But there's a best way you could change that better. It should be, yeah, him in hell killing the devil, but he should go after a loved one, like a daughter or a or a wife. Then that'll be better. I, I feel if you, game, if you did it now, it would just be the Doom Slayer version of like you know this badass dude that eat demons fucking fear and write legends about. Yeah, see, when they did Doom twenty sixteen and beyond, that's like that should be the movie. Like the fact that like, everybody's telling him the story and shit, he's like, no, I'm just here to, I'm just here to clean up your fucking mess and go back. <laughs> that's like Doom twenty sixteen, but Sid is Doom Doom um, oh what's the what what they call the last Doom game? Uh, um, Doom, Doom Eternal. Eternal. So with Doom Eternal, you found out that, holy shit. Spoiler alert, this game's been out for a while, but I'm surprised people haven't caught on. He's Damien. He's the son of the devil. And that's like, oh shit. This whole time, he was the son of the devil? Fuck. And the fact, he doesn't even want to rule hell. He just wants to destroy it. And it's and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the thing that made him so cool was his first words were no to his own dad. I'm like, damn. 
That's how core he is. He finally talks. He tells no to his dad, kills him, and goes back to killing like 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 it's a normal Tuesday for him. And there's times that like sometimes the movie doesn't even have to be accurate to the source material because it's like it's not meant to be taken seriously anyways. Like Street Fighter. Oh, Street Fighter is so, a fucking underrated comedy. I fucking love Street yeah. Fighter. So it's like sometimes like you know like it's very hard to make a live action something which was something like Street Fighter. Like come on. You're really gonna make a movie about Street Fighter. Final, F- Final Fight has a better shot being a retold as a real movie than Street Fighter. Like, uh, Street Fighter is like by no means an amazing movie, but it's a hell of a fucking entertaining one. It is like you got you got you got Julia Ju- uh, Juilliard um, uh, playing uh, Bison. Raul Julia, oh, no. the best Bison uh, Ra- ever. Yeah, Raul Julia. He's great as Bison. He did it for his kids. What a trooper, especially during the time he had left. It's like he, he was like, like, soon he, as he, the, he had cancer or yeah, something. Cancer, yeah, he had cancer. And he still did it. He because his kids like Street Fighter. He powered through it. He gave like probably one of the greatest performances ever. He did. That movie did not deserve him at all at his top form. It's like he acted out the shit out of that movie. It wasn't comedic either. Like like people were like, that's kind of fun. It's like, no, he's actually playing it straight and that's kind of hard to do with a, with a character the, like the that. The reason why it's funny is because he's so serious while everything else around him is so stupid. It is. It's like like if you just take those M. Bison scenes alone and cut out the stupid parts, you could feel like he's just a regular fucking dictator for a Bond movie. Yeah. Like I like I wish the YouTube video didn't got taken down, but someone actually photoshopped him in a James Bond movie, and it felt like a James Bond movie. Like fuck, he should have been a Bond villain. And there, and there's moments that are like so over the top dumb. Like it's great to see. Like you know the fact that you and Ken are like criminals. It's like not, not even like even big though they're not. criminals. They're like they're like petty con artists. Yeah, trying to be big in the world. They got Chun-Li as a news anchor. It's like, what the fuck? Like, she's from... Sh- she's a cop in the game. Yeah, she's from Interpol. Like, Ryu Ken are like... Yeah, they're like... They're running hustles and scams and trying to fuck... Sagat's an arms dealer and to try to fuck him out of weapons. Chun-Li's a reporter. And then Honda and Balrog are part of her news crew. And Balrog's a good guy. DJ's a bad guy. He's a computer hacker. Like, I kind of feel DJ and Balrog should have been switched. Yeah, Zangief was a bad guy too, but the dude played Zangief was like spot on perfect for Zangief. <laughs> yeah, he was he was perfect. Like he's like you know what he was actually dead on perfect as Zangief. He is kind of that dumb, but he was gullible. It's like uh, shit, that is Zangief. And I know they got like a Samoan dude to play uh, Honda. They made him like a Hawaiian sumo wrestler. Yeah. Like, there were some moments they got right. Like, Ch- Cammy was great, spot on. Uh, they, they got fucking Ky- Kyle. They got Kylie McDoe to play Cammy. Yeah. And the guy was a little off base because you got a French guy playing an American dude. Yeah, he's like, French. What? He's like Belgian. He's Belgian. Oh, yeah, that's right. Belgian. Chocolat Vigam is Belgian. And that was so off. It's like, like, to be honest, like, I think he missed his chance to be in the Mortal Kombat movie as Johnny Cage. But I like the other guy better. He turned it down to do uh, Street Fighter. You know, now this dude's not American either, but I think he could do the accent better. Visually, I just think Dolph Lundgren would have been a better guile in the 90s. Yeah, he would have. So, so, and when it comes to like properties with game movies, it's like there's a handful of good ones. There's a handful of bad ones. Actually, there's way more bad gl- than there are good. The, the good ones you can just count I, on, their ha- on your hand. I think there's some bad ones. They're not really that bad. They're like, they're decent. Like when I say really bad, I mean like something like, like Mario. Like Marvel, like that it has to be that degree bad. Actually, and I'm not not talking about the 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 new one that's coming out. I mean, like, you know, come on, they made Toad into a Goomba right off the bat. See, the Mario movie is not great, but it's it's entertaining. Like, I think the worst thing a movie could be is boring. Yeah, I think I think a boring film is uh, with nothing going on is way worse than. A, a bad movie that has a lot of 
like crazy shit going on that's entertaining. Uh, oh, yeah. I do feel there's a lot more bad adaptations out there. Uh, there, and then there's some that kind of fall into the like it's so bad it's it's good. Because I know like where are some good examples of really bad ones. There's like Double Dragon, uh, the KOF movie, uh, the the Street Fighter movie with uh, the story of Chun Li, Legend of Chun Li. Uh, you know. People crap on DOA, but the thing is, DOA is like the most fateful adaptation of a fucking video game. People are like, well, what the fuck? What do you mean? It's like, well, think about it. There's barely any real plot. There's some fighting, and uh, uh, bo- people are playing volleyball, and there's a fuck ton of fan service. I don't know. It sounds like Dead or Alive yeah. to me. Yeah, it does. That's why I consider Dead or Alive not like bad or good. It's still entertaining because it's exactly like the source material. Like it, it might uh, not be something... the best, but it's it's the probably the most faithful in in that regard. Plus, I find me, I find like... the fact that Kevin Nash played a bass with a Hogan wig. Yeah, that's hilarious. hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it is. And they got that chick in My Name Is Earl as as Dixie. No, it's Tita. Dixie's Tita, the, yeah, Dixie's like... the chick from Rumble the... Roses. Like oh my the bad. exact same character, <laughs> but for yeah, and then the oh god, they got the ninja prostitute is Kasumi, and then they oh, yeah. they got a ninja black from a uh, Kaku Ranger as high as Hayabusa. Another movie that it hits the mark on certain things, but the story itself kind of falls is Tekken. Like they got the characters right, for, they got their attitudes the right. Part, for the most part, Christy, like except for Christy, Christy that movie except, should have been should have been Lily. Yeah, or like, or the thing is, the the actor who played Kazuya <laughs> didn't want to shave his goatee because of the Mortal Kombat thing he was doing at the time, <laughs> so he refused to shave. <laughs> but he got Shang Tsung as Hihachi. That was dope. <laughs> I just think of uh, fucking Kazuya when he's like fucking both Nina and Anna. He's like, I fucking hate my dad so much. My fucking dad sucks. <laughs> I'll show him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the live action Tekken movie was like it got some characters right, and but the story itself sucked. Like it was like this Mad Max apocalypse bullshit. Like that's not how it happened. It was like a dystopian cyberpunk future. Yeah, yeah. Like that's not how it happened. That's not until seven week becomes that. <laughs> like this is supposed to be Tekken three. Like it hasn't. The Earth hasn't fucked itself yet. One thing I thought was really cool, and I wish, I wish a fighting game. I know there's a, oh, what's it the? I think it's called Last Bout. There's a there's a really good like uh Mugen game, uh, like original characters and shit that does this. But uh, it's, it's when the way they they kind of handle the the fighters have their own unique stages. They're in an arena, and it. It is basically it's like a holographic fucking thing where the where the stage changes, and then like oh, yeah. and there's uh, I guess platforms are ever right. Basically, it's like they're in the arena, and then all of a sudden, like oh, you're going to fight Eddie Gordo, and then it just changes it into like a beach setting. And I thought that was just really cool. That was cool. I like that. Like that kind of, that that really brings out the characters in them too, because it's like. He's like he's he's Caparera, so he's he's gonna be perfect for the beach because of the sand and shit spilling oh, everywhere the, while he does his moves. The dude they got to play Eddie Gordo is um, I think is was it Latif Crowder? I think I remember that right. He's the Capoeira guy that Tony Jaw fights in the Burning Temple and the Protector. Tom Young. Oh, Boone. No, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And that dude basically was Eddie Gordo. So the fact they got him to play yeah. Eddie Gordo, oh, fucking perfect. Because, Grant, that whole fight scene in the Burning Temple was amazing. It was just a fucking beat him up. Because you have to, he fights one boss after the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, like, there, there, so when it comes to game, video game, movie properties, it's like there is right ways to do it, there's wrong ways to do it. It's just the guy, so far, the guy from Silent Hill hits it because it's like he takes the source material he adds a little bit of what the fans want but he keeps it straight enough for the casual person who's never touched Silent Hill in his life to enjoy this movie the the way it is like my cousin my cousin David never played Silent Hill at all 
when he watched the first movie, he asked me straight up, hey, can I borrow your copy of one? I'm like, let me guess, the movie? Yeah. All right, so after you beat one, the other guys are from the other two, so you'll have to play two and three. And I'm going to tell you this, one and three connect. Have fun. Okay, well, because even with all the... Uh... With, even with, our, with all the changes, um, it still s- stays true to the spirit of Silent Hill. Yep, it does. It's and he, he and the fact he, like I said, he's a fan. He's a fan of the franchise, so he knew exactly how to treat this right, and that's very rare. Like there'll be there'll be people who are a fan of something and they can still mess it up. Like for example, look at Star Trek. Uh, oh, which one? The one. The one Kurt, the one um, Shatner directed. Oh, uh, Star Trek um, Five. The one is that the one with the with the whale, right? No, f- four is the one directed by Leonard Nimoy with the whales. Uh, the Star Trek uh, Five is the one where they have to find God. What does yeah, God that's... need with, with a starship? So, so with that case, it's like that's how you can know you can mess it up, even though you know the source material inside out. But the best one is contract, uh, no, Star Trek Three: Wrath of Khan, because one, it was a it was directed by a guy who's never been a fan at all. He never liked it, but he knows enough about it. He's like, you know what? Let me watch some of the old episodes, and he came across the episode of Khan. He's like, I like this character. Let's make a movie on this character, and then he realized, wait a minute. It's just Navy ships in space, right? Yeah. Let's treat this like Horatio and Horblower in space. And we'll treat Khan like Moby Dick story. Because he's always going after Kurt, but he never gets that white well. There you go. There's your movie. It's it's Moby Dick and Horatio Horblower put together in space. And, the, and that's why 3 is the best one out of mostly all of them. Because... It wasn't a fan, but at least someone understood the material to direct it right. And and it was a fresh set of eyes too, because it was like 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 I said, the one with um with uh with um Shatner directing it. Sometimes you love the property, you can still fuck it up. So it's just knowing the source material, how to write for it and executing it right will determine how good of a movie or show is. That's why you got shows like Cobra Kai that kicks ass. You got shows like what's another one that's an adaptation from a movie that became a show. Um, Highlander from a movie to a show that that kicks ass. Oh. Um. Oh. Uh. Go ahead. I. I. There's some breaking news. Okay. And um. Oh, last one I want to mention because it's a good one. You guys should watch too. That's based on a property. That was really good on on some other nerd shit like like what's a good one? Um Oh man, I wanna I wanna say No, I think those are the two ones I can think right now. So breaking news. Uh James Gunn and uh producer Peter Saffron will now lead the the uh the DC f- uh film T V and animation division. Oh, that's gonna be fucking great. That's gonna be beautiful. James Gunn will in a be, good way. Yeah, J- James Gunn will be in charge of uh of creative. Uh, while um, I, let me let me uh get this right. Hold on. Uh, so so yeah, they um. So it looks, yeah. So it looks like uh, Gunn will focus on the creative side of things, while Saffron will uh, will handle the business and production side, and they'll they'll both report directly to David Zaslav. But they're going to continue nice. the, to direct and produce their own their own separate projects. But yeah, the James Gunn's now in charge of the DC uh, media division, film, TV, and animation. Oh, I'm a little worried about him now because he's been popular lately when it comes to this type of stuff, like superhero stuff, because he's still doing Guardians of the Galaxy 3. 
and the 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 Christmas special as well. Well, he's finished. He's, yeah. he's finishing up with Marvel. He's pretty much done with Marvel. And I know until they drag him back. <laughs> I don't know if he's working with DC. I don't see him going back. Uh, I can see. Do they? DC they try, they I will see, because I see Warner Bros. trying to lock him in. No, oh, I know, but but Disney loves him so much because they actually let him film the last scene in a Marvel studio. The, you know that Flash scene with you know that scene in um, Peacemaker when the Flash and Aquaman came out. That was filmed in a Marvel studio set. Yeah, well, he says he's done with Marvel because remember after they they fired him the first time and then they brought him back. He says he just wanted to finish Guardians. Yeah. Um. And I that, and I yeah, that's true. And the thing is, DC really, DC Warner Brothers really need him. They need someone like him. Do imagine see imagine him being in charge now because we're gonna get a shit ton of C, B. And D list heroes and villains coming out of the woodworks. We might get Snowflame at some point. Fuck you. Snowflame and uh cod cod piece. Yeah. I, oh come on. <laughs> come on, James Gunn, give us those three. We want those three to show. Or at least put them in Peacemaker. Oh fuck yes. Uh now they did say that a lot of these DC projects they're not gonna be they're not gonna be like a big connected universe. A lot of these will be like separate universe stuff, which is good. That's Honestly, what I want. That's what I want. Just, just, <laughs> just make a good movie. I don't, I, don't, I, I think one of the problems with DC is that they're trying way too hard to be Marvel. And then, but the other thing is that they're also being way too edgy. You gotta, yeah. there's gotta be a good balance, but so far, this is like the best news to come out of Warner brothers. It is. That is the best news to come out of Warner Bros. Like, like not every fucking DC movie or show needs to be co- co- connected. Like, like perfect example, look at Doom Patrol. Like, the only connection was with Cyborg. After that, it was its own thing until they canceled it. I don't know why they fucking yeah. canceled it. It was a good show. Uh, another, another DC project that didn't need to connect to the universe was Joker. A standalone movie. Like, that was perfect. I mean, um, if anything, I would have kind of preferred if like uh suicide squad and uh peacemaker were separate from the the dc cinematic universe yeah or at least be one of those ones so like they're in the same universe but they don't really interact with each other yeah you know well they're they're i know waller is in uh black adam uh, oh dude i saw the last i saw the last scene it's awesome okay cool the, yeah the, the same it, thing yeah i could all i have to say is there's a reason why the critic score in Rotten Tomatoes is retarded, and the fan reaction is spot on. Okay, like I can I can see why, I can see why everybody's defending this movie. Um, uh, but I know like DC really loved James Gunn, and I know like and obviously like a lot of people, a lot of actors who worked with him really love him. They pushed him. I mean, fuck. Batista was ready to just fucking walk out on Marvel. They did not bring back James Gunn. A bunch of people who work oh. in Guardians. That that's how much they like the dude. So I'm glad- oh, dude, um, dude, it was funny. The the actress who plays um um the sister, the one that's all machine. Oh, uh, Nebula. She literally walked out set. She literally walked off set. Goes, yeah, I'm not coming back. Call me when he comes back. I like. Damn, she took her a personal holiday for like two months until James Gunn came back. I'm like, fuck, she did it. She literally walked off set. That's dope. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I'm what I'm hoping they could do is bring Batista in, and then I want Peacemaker, Black Adam, and whoever the fuck Batista is gonna play together on screen. Oh, all I, the got rest, I got all, it. I got it. Who can it be? Batista's Lobo. Oh my god, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Him as Lobo, that'd be dope. He's perfect. I want a James Gunn and, Lobo movie. So and if bad. people give me if if people give us crap saying that Batista can't talk, I'm like, have you seen Blade Runner? He's actually a good actor. He knows how to play a character. I actually think he's a better actor than The Rock. <laughs> He is, well, dude. Him he... and Cena have been getting better roles. I mean, I still need to see Black Adam because I was really interested in seeing The Rock in that because 
normally the rock always plays, you know, big, cool, tough guy. And it's kind of like, he always has to be the rock. So I did want to see him at, uh, play a villain. Cause when was the last time he played a fucking villain, Scorpion King and doom. Yeah. Uh, oh, and Doom, he wasn't really a villain. He was an asshole. Well, at the end, he becomes like the final yeah. boss. And it's, it's kind of sucks because they misled you to believing that he was Doom guy. And then it turns out to be yeah. uh, Billy Butcher. Yeah. Which, I mean, I love Carl Urban, so I'm fine either way. It's just kind of funny how they kind of lead you with that. But, uh. And, okay. Yeah, so. No, The Rock, I heard some good reviews of The Rock being Adam. Like, he fits perfectly, they said. Like, it's basically he took all the stuff he learned from the Scorpion King and improved it. Like, he he knew how to approve th- that type of character. Like, he knew how to act. Again. Like, he knows how to talk, basically. He knows how to act, act. Not just play cool action hero guy. So... Now that James Gunn and uh, this producer, uh, Peter Saffron, uh, 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 and it's cool. They're kind of doing the, the Triple H Stephanie thing. You know, Gunn's going to handle the, the creative stuff while Saffron's going to handle the business stuff. Yeah. Uh, but all right. So they gave they gave James Gunn, you know, the keys to the media division, you know, TV, film and animation. When are they going to give Todd the comics division? Dude, I'm waiting so for Tom McFarlane that... to get control of uh, DC Comics. Okay, so with that news said, um, some of my sources I cannot establish that your sauces. Sit, my sources sauces. <laughs> I got my finger in the sauce. I know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> the special so, sauce. So, yep, the special sauce. Not that ugly pink shit. <laughs> so, so Todd might not take the keys, but, but, there's another guy that he's actually friends with Todd is going to take the keys, and he's actually going to run everything by Todd first. So, basically, Todd is going to be Papatine, and this guy is Dark Vader type of deal. So, the comic books are going to turn around again. Some some say that they're gonna go back to being ninety style in the sense of storytelling, like just over the top fun, just just be fun. None of this bullshit in there. The art I will change so. for the better. The art will change for the better because they are tired of hiring Tumblr artists, quote unquote. Because uh, don't get me wrong, there's a few good artists that are still in Tumblr that are kick ass and they deserve bucks. But when I say Tumblr artists, I mean like people who draw Squirrel Girl, people who draw um, that shitty new Robin book when he's fucking bi now or gay, um, and uh, and the cancel of Superboy, the 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 shitty Superman one I hate, not the Metropolis Kid, but the the lame the lame um one. The one, the one I like to, the one I like to call Superman failed on. It, <laughs> like he failed as a father on that one. It sucks because Jonathan in that Super Sons movie is actually really good. Oh, dude, I got to see that movie. It's out, by the way. It's fucking great. It's fun. It's amazing. And to be honest, if I own the DVD of that, the disc will get scratched because I'll keep rewinding that one scene over and over again. Two. Justice in the American way. I love hearing that again. Oh, that made so many people mad. Fuck them. That's what Superman's about. Because a lot of people still don't get it. Superman was raised by two loving American Christian value family. Like, you know, and it's like... Kansas he doesn't... farmers. They're farmers. Yeah, they're working class blue collar people. Of course he's going to learn the right well, way. The other thing is people misinterpret American ways like... Oh, pre, uh, pro fascist capitalist American government. No, no. American way is the ideals, the message. The idea, the message was the pursuit of happiness, to pursue what you want to do in this country of the free, to pursue of your dreams. That was the point of America. That is still the point of America. It's just, let's be real. This generation of kids are fucking spoiled, rotted, and they're fucking entitled. They don't understand that it, because they haven't they haven't struggled until all I'm saying is grab these fucking kids, drag them into war, 
then they'll learn why it's called the American dream again. It's the same people that think like Captain America is like a like a pro Republican government superhero when he's actually actively fought against the government multiple times because Cap will tell you himself the A on my head stands for a better America that that we should strive to be. A better example. Yeah. That's the point of that's the point of when Superman says the, you know, the true justice in the American way is the pursuit of happiness. What, what do you want to get from this country? That's the point of it. So, so the whole thing about Superman is that here's this guy, this this godlike being, and he and he's everything that we should aspire to be. He wants to be like the example for humanity. Yeah. That's what humanity is supposed to strike towards, too. That's what that's the point of humanity in in the in this day and age. Like, we want to be like Superman. He, we want to reach to that point. And you know, I also liked how Christopher Reeves described him. He says Superman is a friend. Yeah, he's a friend. It's, it's again, I I'm tired of Edge Lord Superman. I want wholesome Superman back. Yeah, I really want whole, wholesome Superman back. And, I have I do have to say, dude, that seed brings that back. Well, because I I know that was it. Man of Tomorrow was really good, and Superman and Lois is really good. So yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, Chris, uh, Chris, what's what's the actor who plays Superman now? Um, the British dude. Oh, um, Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill, in in the few minutes of him being Superman in the in the in the Black Adam movie. He literally becomes humble Superman again. Also, like he's not doing, he's not doing that shitty Superman one. No, he's literally, he's literally Christopher Reeve style Superman because they gave him the spit curl back. It's, it's almost like Zack Snyder's a shitty director. Oh yeah. God, I'm probably gonna give the the Snyder army after me. Oh fuck them. You mean those fucking losers who fucking stay in their house all day and fucking only watch dark edge lord superhero movies? Fuck them. Like look, I like I like uh Sin City and I like 300, but I'm sorry, Batman v Superman sucked and the Snyder cut it did. did not make things any it made it a little better, but it did not really save that movie. It was way Dude, too I pretentious. Could've... For its own good, dude. I couldn't sit down the whole three fucking hours of that. Like everybody will, four everybody will hours. tell me like it was. F- was it it was four. Fuck. I think it was. I think four. it was three and a half. I think it was three and a half or four. The point is, I ended up watching it in two days. Like I took like half of it one day, and I took the other half the next day. And of course, everybody's gonna give me shit. Like, oh, you saw the Avengers movie, and that movie's like three plus hours. But the thing is, the pacing of it was like you don't even notice it was three hours. You're so focused on the story, you don't even notice how long it took. But in this one, like the pacing is so slow at times. And then some parts it was too fast, and then it was too slow. Like there was moments I fell asleep, and I had to rewind it where the parts I fell asleep in. I'm, I'm That's ho- why it took me two days to watch it. I'm hoping we can get a version of Pa Kent who doesn't tell Clark to to let those kids drown and die. I know, like I'm still pissed about that. Like it's like, dude, I don't care why how many people make... try to justify that and spin it. It's like, oh, he's trying to no. No, Pa Kent no. would never, ever fucking tell he Clark will, that. He would never say that. The worst thing what Pa would tell Superman or Clark Kent is, you got to be more careful. You cannot do that again. Like, find a different way to save them without them knowing that you have these godlike abilities. Like, he would never say that shit. That's what pissed me off. Like, if if I if I had, like, a soda in my head that day when I watched it, that screen would have, would have been... That screen would have been stained with a soda cup, just like I did in Godzilla, the New York Godzilla movie when I was a kid. <laughs> oh no, seriously, dude! I threw a soda at the screen, and we had to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> and this is like a ten-year-old or a nine-year-old me being angry at it because saying that that lizard ain't Godzilla. <laughs> That's why when they chopped him out in Final Wars, that made that shit even uh, even uh, funnier. Oh, dude, but. I'm just glad that James Gunn's going to be the charge of creativity because he knows how to tell a story. He knows how to play with the characters. 
Hell, he's a comic book fan himself, so... Imag like, I just can't wait for him to start bringing heroes and villains from, like, D, C, and B list. Like, A list is easy to get, but come on. If he's able to make Polka Dot Man kick ass, I want to see what he could do with Condiment King, Calendar Man, and all those other groups. I want some real losers. I'm not just talking about the DC team the losers. I'm talking about some actual just lame-ass fucking joke uh, loser characters. That's why I think the bring in Snowflame, bring in Dog Wilder, bring in Cod Piece. Oh, there's so much more, but those are the best ones out of the of that pile. Because uh, you could definitely write a Miami style story with Snowflake and Codpiece. Well, let's be real; his origin story is an incel story, anyways. Oh yeah, you you could. It's easy to adapt in modern age. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so funny too because the thing is, the girls told him that he was small. But he would, they were, he thought it was his, about his junk. It wasn't about his junk. It was his height. So it's like, oh, just like today, kids misinterpret things. That fits perfectly for him. He'll be perfect this day and age as hero. It'll be even funnier. Hear me out. If it was a woman that becomes codpiece, think about it. She's so insecure of herself. She has to pretend she's a man now to get respect. <laughs> Oh, there's so much shit I could say for right so much. <laughs> you can you you can tell that cop piece is perfect for everybody. Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, fuck oh. it. Uh, you get get Michael Vick to play Dog Wilder. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> <sighs> uh, oh man. But it'll be cool though, if he's willing to do it. I could see him doing one last hurrah. And James Gunn has hired old school star actors before. Al Pacino as Snowflame. Just shut up and take my fucking money right now. <laughs> right? See, that is dull. <laughs> I've also would have accepted uh, Charlie Sheen or Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> Ric Flair would be dull. I can see Ric Flair doing it. it was some of the biggest fucking coke fiends you can think of. For those who oh. don't know, Snowflame is a supervillain who is powered by cocaine. Co and his powers are are him getting super strong while taking cocaine, contact high. Basically, if you get close to him, you're getting high off of his high. And just him just being overpowered when he's high. Does he shoot? I'm pretty sure he shoots like white fire or some shit. Yeah, he shoots, he shoots also cocaine too. And, and uh, you know, he had, like, he looked like a pro wrestler. Like, he had, like, this singlet and shit. He kind of looked like the ultimate warrior. And when they, they brought him back uh, recently, and he's now, like, you know, a Miami Vice-style drug dealer. And it, it, With fucking LA Gear shoes, of all things. Yeah. Just Snowflame is just fucking tremendous. And, and, oh, and the most important thing I forgot to mention he worships cocaine as his god, and he speaks to his lord and savior, cocaine. He is yep. the instrument of cocaine's will. <laughs> if that doesn't say super villain, I don't know what does. Yeah, dude, I I'm all for this. I well, hey, oh. it's it's nice to hear some positive news out of fucking Warner Brothers for once. Yeah, like that fucking downhill they're having right now. Oof. Yeah, it uh, it's been rough. I I mean. Well, the other thing is now we're going to wait, uh, see what's going to happen with uh, AEW's waiting to, to renew their their deal with the network, and supposedly they want to produce a non, they want to continue more AEW, but they also want to produce some extra like non wrestling content with AEW wrestlers. No, no, they cannot be WWE status. They can't do that. Look what happened to WWE when they did their network thing. Some shows were great, some shows flopped. Well, I mean, they did that god awful Cody and Brandy reality show. I'm trying to just think what else. Like, I don't know. Is Britt Bank? Oh, you Brit mean you mean you mean the rip off of the Miss show? Yeah, you think uh, maybe a show about Britt Baker in the fucking dentist's office? Maybe I don't know. They 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 got no one to do that. Like, okay. They could do sketches with them, but they can't do real shows with these guys. Like, let's be honest. Some of the AEW wrestlers are not meant for TV. I got let's it. Let's be real. 
I got it. And unfortunately, it would be stepping in on Xavier Woods' toes. But if you really want to, like, stick at the WWE, give Kenny Omega a video game show. Yeah. But make it, like, super low budget, though, like Ghetto. Or give him, like, an FGC show. Fuck it. Yeah. If I have to give anybody a TV show from AEW, of all people, I will definitely do a Charlie Chaplin thing with Orange Cassidy. I I got it. Honestly, just put a fucking camera backstage. <laughs> See all the fights? <laughs> and, 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 and all the biting of people's arms? <laughs> so, like, honestly, the best television they, they put is the one you don't see. They should, they... the shit that's backstage. Because it's always like, who's unhappy? And who wants to leave? Who's going to fucking start shooting Dude, on Twitter? Who's going to start fighting I got, backstage? I got an idea. Let MTV produce this and call it AEW's The Real World. Because <laughs> it literally is just the real world in backstage. That's what it is. It's the real world. <laughs> uh, so Jason Solomon, uh, the Saw Monster, called it uh, AEW Elementary. Oh God, that's perfect. You got, you got Principal Con. You got Mr. Con, the principal. You know, you just had to send uh, Phil, Kenny, Matt, and Nick home. You know, it's, uh, after they got it, uh, after that big fight they had at school. The, uh, yeah. Fuck it up. Uh, and you know, he Max has been, uh, you know, uh, Manny, he's been trying to leave the, the school and he picked a fight with Sammy, but you know, Prince of Mr. Khan won't send him, uh, he won't let, he won't let him, uh, get expelled, but he'll send him home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll do his, uh, he'll do his wrestling matches <clears throat> over on, on Zoom calls. Dude, Tony, I, I, I know, like, we're, we're, look. We said before we're going to have a wrestling show for this, but I just want to. So we'll we'll say we'll try to keep the wrestling talk here for uh, to a minimum. But I just want to say, but then, but this is what you, but this is a sample what you what you will expect on our, our wrestling podcast. Tony, see, Tony did it like want to run a wrestling company. He wanted to run run his his uh, e fed. So basically, Legends of Wrestling in real life. Yeah, you know, like, Aaron has their own E-Fed. This is his E-Fed. Yeah. He gets to play with his live-action action figures. I want to I wanna buy that $2,000 uh, play set with the ring and the studio audience. I want this $50 Kenny Omega action figure with the with the $60 twin pack of uh, the Young Bucks. Oh, I want that discount Jericho that's worth $20 now. Uh, who else? Who else I want? Oh, I want that five dollar um of uh, Rusev doll, but that's not Rusev. Um, oh shit! Uh, uh, they they just they just put CM Punk on the market. I gotta fucking get oh, that. Oh cool! Oh, uh, limited edition too. <laughs> oh, I want to buy um per- the Big Show. That's not the Big Show, but I'm gonna cuss. I'm gonna do a toy smash and make him look like Captain Insano from from uh Waterboy. You gotta be careful with that CM Punk figure. I hear it's pretty fragile. Oh, yeah, it comes with his own dog, by the way. <laughs> Man, the dog wasn't the one that bit anyone. Hey, <laughs> no, that's the funny part. <laughs> it was his friend that bit him. Like, have you seen the episode of Seinfeld where John Boyd bit um, Costanza's arm? <laughs> oh, but I can okay, imagine so- that. <laughs> I'll see you the clip later, but that's basically what I think how he bit it, how big Kitty on the Vegas arm. It's John Void. If no one knows who Joy Void is, I, that's very old. He's the guy from the Midnight Cowboy, and he's done other shit too back in the 70s and 80s. But the point is, in Seinfeld, he bites George Costanza's arm because. It's Angelina Jolie's dad. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, he's Angelina <laughs> oh. Jolie's dad. That's I keep forgetting about that. That's woof. <laughs> but I the know, point I, is, like, imagine, imagine being the imagine coming out of his balls. Yeah. Too bad none of her talent got transferred over. <laughs> hey, <Ayo. laughs> hey, it's the truth. <laughs> uh, <sighs> it's like, I I, I like though that. <clears throat> That the story, uh, like they try to paint Kenny Omega as the angel. It's like, well, he was just trying to save the dog. 
<laughs> and then what's his face bit him? <laughs> it's like the dog didn't bit him. That's the that's the thing that tripped me out. The fact that Kenny's like, I care about this dog, but the dog didn't bit him. It was some crazy wild man bit him. Like so, for what I found out, A Steel's wife was backstage when that happened. And she had like a broken leg or she was kind of fucked up. I don't know if she had some surgery, but so she was the reason why she's backstage because she was taking care of the dog. And when the yeah. shit when this fight breaks down, she can't really go anywhere. So I don't blame A Steel for going ape shit. He's probably thinking, like, I gotta keep my fucking wife safe and my best friend's dog safe. So he's the one like fucking punching people and chucking chairs and biting motherfuckers. I thought he just was like going to bite Kenny Omega in the forehead. Then I finally bit him in the arm because I was thinking he was like grabbing him by the hair and just like, just like gnawing on his fucking head and shit. <clears throat> no, what I was thinking when he, when I was thinking that he bit him, I was thinking more like they were punching and kicking, and somehow he accidentally his teeth cut him or something. Like, cause that does happen. It someone's teeth does get involved in a fight. And does some magical fucking fuckery. You get cut by their teeth. It happens when you, you know, two guys rolling on the fl- ground, punching in and shit. You don't know what could happen. They, so that's what I thought that happened. They said that he was pulling his hair and bit his arm. So I have to imagine there was maybe there was some kind of hold involved. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like maybe Kenny Omega had him in the headlock and he's like, fuck this. I'm biting your arm to get out. Or so, Or something, yeah. Fucking man, what a what a fucking shit show. <laughs> yeah, A uh, Steel got fired and they're gonna buy out Punk's contract. So Punk's not yeah. never coming back. Uh and people think he's seriously gonna go back to WWE. I mean maybe if the money's right, but I don't know. I know Triple H would do the professional thing and put personal feelings aside for business but at, and he probably would hear punk out but apparently there's people in the company who are telling him no he is not worth the fucking trouble no he's not he, he's not he was never worth he was never worth anything to begin with i never bought into the hype for this dude like all i saw was like the guy cuts a really good compelling promo that's about it here here's the thing I seen the fans of Punk. They're just like him. And I can see why he, they like Punk. Because all those guys are dumb fucking idiots that don't know better. And they and they love to smell their own shit. They're the wrestling fans that make the wrestling fans look bad. Well, they're, they're all insecure and just have like a mass a a a, a, a fucking out of whack ego. And then I always hate, and the conversation I hate the most is, Kevin Owens stole everything from Punk. Yes and no. Yeah, he still kind of, he did kind of steal his gimmick, but here's the thing he did better. He wasn't fighting to be for himself. He actually kept on saying time and time again, he fights for his fucking family. Well, He'll take that extra heat for a bigger check for them. Also, That's what made him better. Also, Steen's not like a fucking psychotic e- ego maniacal c- uh, cunt <laughs> like Phil no, is not yeah and <laughs> and Steen is like his his personality works better because he looks like the every man that's an average let's be real that some of the wrestling fans are <clears throat> look like that I'm guilty of it some people are guilty of it I, but that's what makes him relatable that's why he makes him relatable He's the average father doing what's best for his family. That's why I like that fucking match with Cena. Father versus Icon match. You know, like, Punk can, can structure a match, but he is a shit athlete. Every time I watch him do the Randy Savage elbow, I cringe because it's so bad looking. Yeah. It is. He doesn't know how to he doesn't know how to stiffen the elbow and tuck it. You know like J- Jericho's probably fucking over the moon because let's be real, there can just like Highlander, there can be only one. There could be only one midlife crisis, arrogant douchebag veteran. Yep. 
Uh, and I never understood why he had to fucking leave WWE. Like, like who, you uh, could have Jericho. Yeah, like I know he wanted to do other shit, and he got tired of it there. Tony, but it's like he, Tony lets him do whatever the fuck he wants. That's the problem. He's not good for that. He's gonna end up having an NWO situation. Look what happened to that. What are you talking about? He already, he already does. That's true. You're right. It's that ship is already sailed. The thing is, if I was Jericho, to be honest, I would never quit WWE. I would have just took it a backstage job, just like Shawn Michaels or any of the old wrestlers did. He, live live on a good paycheck. Apparently, he's taken something similar. I know he's going to be like. He got hold on. There, Variety reported it, but wow, Variety of all places. Yeah, you no, know, because I'm pretty sure uh, AEW kind of fed it to them. They probably wanted Variety to cover them, but they why the wrestling magazines are good. <laughs> oh come on! Oh, what well, was was Meltzer like? What was the Meltzer wasn't available to fucking uh, cover your shit? By the way, I heard, oh, after it? I heard they finally cleaned his office. Wow, they they did they hire like a bunch of like uh, maids and they like go in there when he's out and about and clean it when he's out. You gotta get like you gotta get twenty three Mexican maids. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> yep. Uh, okay, <sighs> so he got Jericho got a contract ex- extension. It'll keep him through. Uh, December 2025. In addition, mm-hmm. Jericho will take on increased responsibilities behind the scenes in AEW and then will now serve as a producer and creative advisor in addition to continuing to mentor young talent. Oh boy. I've seen all the shit Jericho's been doing. I would not trust him with any more creative. I don't it's- think I don't think he I don't think he's doing that. I think he's just that's a bullshit title and he just shows up once a week to collect the check and go home. No, he's been trying to push all this like shit. He's been trying to get all this goofy shit over like like uh like uh like, they're trying to like oh yeah, we're sports entertainment and it's like uh, oh, I'm a wizard. I shot a fireball in your face. He's like he's trying to get all this shit over. What happened of like not being a sports entertainment and being real wrestling game? Remember that? Well, the sports entertainment thing is, is, is get it. We're e- we're sports entertainment. We're we're like WWE. Boo us. Ugh. And and now That's he's ridiculous. like the Ring of Honor champion. He's like, oh, I'm going to destroy Ring of Honor. And it's like Jericho winning the ROH title is like when they made Chavo ECW champion. Or when Ziggler became NXT champion. (laughs) Oh, fuck. Uh, I mean, they also signed John Moxley. They, I mean, because they they really need John Moxley. They do. Like I like I said, like I stopped. He's become their guy. He's yeah, because I stopped. I stopped watching AEW because he was gone. Yeah, I mean, because M- I mean, let's be real. MGF is the real star, but John Moxley is the guy. He's like, he's the yeah. franchise player. I mean, for fuck's sake, after the fight, he, w- John Moxley, was not supposed to come back for a while. He was supposed to be on vacation with his wife, but with the shit that happened, he he had to come back. That's a team player. I mean, no. Now I can see why they no. probably hired his wife, though. She's probably pissed. It's like you better at least. Yeah, you ruined her fucking honeymoon. Yeah. 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 So like, all right, you know, give her a job. I mean, I don't blame her. But... Did she really got like? I, did she walk out of WWE or they fired her? Uh, I, I don't know if they let her go or or she left, but because she wasn't with them, and then she here's the thing. She wasn't under contract, but I think they would bring her in occasionally for like a pre-show. But she had her own podcast, and I remember hearing ESPN was looking for her. But she, yeah, she wasn't with them. Oh, but WWE, oh, she was independent. Also, she was straight up real independent. But they wanted to bring her back. They did really want to, especially because I think when Triple H got into power, they wanted to bring her back. But at at that time, it's already too late because I think AEW was already going to bring her in. And granted, 
she wants to be with her husband. Totally understandable. Yeah, and she and to be honest, they need someone like her. Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I liked her when she was in WWE, but I think what they should do is, I feel they should do another talk and smack. They do. They need a show like that. That's that's what's missing actually for AEW. They're missing a sh- they're missing a segment like that. Get her and Brian together again. Oh I, yeah, I really like sure them on on talking smack. Dude, especially unscripted too. Like they were great. The the Miz promo or my favorite is when he just flat out just put AJ Styles at the spot and said like, yo, you believe the Earth's flat? Hey hey hey, hold on a second. <laughs> I don't think the Earth is flat. I just think there's some stuff about it. Or I like when Kevin Owens was about to graduate her about her wedding. He's like, oh, congratulations. You got... And she's like, no, 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 no. Oh, congratulations on a great day. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I see. Like, they really do need someone like her because she's really good on, not just on mic, on like mic skills. And, like, not like wrestling mic skills. I mean, like, Journalism, Mike. She, she, like. She's good. Yeah, she's good doing backstage interviews. Uh, that's why I prefer her over that uh, that Officer Bar Brady looking motherfucker, uh, Alex Marvez. That dude has the charisma of dried paint. How? And the thing is, it's not that hard because you work with these guys every fucking day. How can you get nervous still? Like, like, don't get me wrong. It's I. I it's very hard to talk to people in front of. In front of um, in front of camera, like if you guys backtrack my channel, I did some interviews. I did one with um, Kitty Kaboom. I did one with my ex, f- f- uh, favorite person in the world, Wooly. Uh, uh, I did it with Phil Moore, the guy who basically did made Nick Arcade and was the producer of G Four before they took it away from him, and um, other in other interviews, it's not. It's hard. It's a little nervous that you'll meet with your favorite people. But at the end of the day, you got to realize they've done this a bunch of times. So you should you should be comfortable to ask them these questions. So I don't know how he can still fumble those questions. And he works with these wrestlers every single night. So I think that dude's like... Because he's friends with Tony Khan, and I think he's like a sport. I don't know if he does like golf or like some kind of sports announcing, but he's just he's he's not suited for wrestling. You know what he should have done then? Brought golf into it. Because okay, hear me out. You know how Tony Schiavone gets into the wrestling because he brings his football energy into it. Because he used to be a football, you know, broadcaster. He used oh, to. Uh, no, Tony Schiavone didn't do football. He does baseball. Baseball, sorry. So, okay, he brings that level of enthusiasm from his baseball days into wrestling. If this dude does that, brings his golf enthusiasm to rest, to the wrestling questions, it'll be great. Because, like, trust me, if you watch, I don't watch golf, but I watch, like, like once in a while I get bored, I watch golf interviews with, you know, the guy on ESPN interviewing a golf player about what clip are you going to use? What is going to be the terrain and all that? They're very detailed conversations. If he brings that into his interviews, he'll be fine. He'll be more than fine. He'll actually be a cool twist. Like, like example, like he interviews um Jericho. He goes, well, Jericho, I'm here to talk to you about what happened to you in the match. Don't you think that if you did this move and do this move differently, you would have won the outcome? And then that's where you could set Jericho off. Be like, yeah, if I did that move and that move, I would have lost. Or how about this? If I did that move at this right time, I would have I would have won. But that's all what is, isn't it, dude? And then walks out angry. You see how it works? But this guy's too fucking scared to do it. God, and then also- I should be running a fucking AEW. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard. <laughs> like, you know, uh, you know, they have Tony Schiavone as a, uh, you know, he, as a in-ring interviewer, but he barely. It's so, like it feels pointless because, like, he'll be in the ring, and then it's like, I is uh, my, my my first my first guest is um, is Sammy Guevara, and then they'll immediately punk him out, take the mic from him, and then Tony just sulks off. 
You know why that happens, right? Why? His wife told because his wife told him to. <laughs> so, <sighs> man, again, I it's 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 fucked up that aside from MJF, the the shit I look forward to the most is like, okay, who's fucking beefing with who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it becomes a gossip column now. Like AEW is just gossip shit now. Like it's like it's like petty shit. We only care about the behind the scenes of this company now. It, we don't even care about the wrestling. Because the, it's it's like the most compelling shit. Is like honestly, if they put cameras backstage, you would have the best television. <laughs> yeah, you would. And it's sad because it's like this is what happens when you buy too many figures. And when we say figures, we mean too many wrestlers. Well, they, he bought too many wrestlers. It's that and the fact that, like, he's doing it all himself. He's the guy booking everything. He's, and, and, uh, and, you know, like, all the shows. And it's like, dude, just just hire someone that actually knows the fuck they're, they're doing. Because eventually he's going to burn himself out. I've already dude, seen. He's already. He's already dude, cracking. He's already. Br- He's already burned out. What are you talking about? Uh, have you seen him drinking a shit ton of energy drinks and doing cocaine? Well, that's well. What I mean is like, I I think he's gonna have a a super fucking mental nervous breakdown, or a stroke. Yeah, or something. Like he he might be he might end up like a uh, Herb Abrams, but without the hookers. Yeah. Oh, uh, but it's <laughs> yeah. Because the thing is like. You need someone, you need, that's why WWE and all these other companies had like a guy who knows how to book matches. And then whoever wins the outcome or whoever they decide to win the outcome, they got another team to write the story. But not too heavily scripted, like loosely scripted, like, okay, like the gist of it, like basically you're telling this wrestler, like, you're, you're mad at this guy because he took your girl. You're mad at him because he, he put you under the spotlight. You're mad at him because... You know, he used to be your ex tag partner and you want revenge because he screws you, you, you all screws you out of the title. Yeah. It's simple. From there you fill out the gaps. It's kinda like a LARP it's a kinda like a LARP session. But, you act you're there you got your basic store, your basic layout, but it's up to you to fill the, the, the gaps. You know, the earth well the earth, WWE has like a team of writers, but thankfully now that Vince is gone. Like, no one sh- has to constantly rewrite shit because Vince would constantly tear up scripts. Yeah. And change everything. But, and the thing, but the thing is, it's like, I, like, a team of writers is good sometimes, but sometimes it isn't because there's some wrestlers who are like, oh, I know what I know what I could do. Like, don't worry. Like, there's wrestlers who could act, already know how to talk and write for themselves. Like, heck, half of the, half of the wrestling staff, well, the wrestlers in WWE have been doing it for a long time anyways. It's like, let them just take the wheel. Like, Kevin, Kevin Owens knows how to do it for years. Like, well, let him take the wheel. I feel they need a booker. It's like, you really could, like, Tony Khan owns Ring of Honor. You mean to tell me he could not have, like, called Delirious and tell, like, hey, I, I need you to book my show because Delirious would have, not only would he would have done it, he probably, probably would have been better. I, uh, Dude, he wouldn't. He wouldn't just take it. He will get a check. He will ask for a big raise for that shit, and he will get it. Yeah, because like, he knows how to book. He knows how to fucking book. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it's. Again, I, they've. Hey, they they made it the three three years. That's commendable. I don't that see is, them last. Like, I, I don't see them lasting another two. We'll see. No, like. We'll see. Yeah, because I thought it was going to die in two years. I mean, I was, you know, I never wanted AEW to fucking bomb and fail. No. I was rooting for them. No, I was too. But you, but you were, you were, you were right. You were showing me the writing on the wall, and I'm like, yeah, I see it too. But it's like maybe they could do something to not go too far. And like, nope, they never yeah, learned their you, lesson. You were it's still like, smoking the co- the. The copium at the time, and I don't blame you. Yeah, because the thing was, come on, what was happening in WWE at the time? I I, I do think Vince leaving was a massive power shift. Yeah. It, it, I'm, it I'm, really I'm, kind of, if any, because look at it six months ago, like, oh man, WWE is so fucking trash. You know, the book is atrocious. Like, even if AEW wasn't perfect, it was still better. 
six months later, it's yep. the exact opposite. Yeah, because you got people who actually want to be there and actually want the business to thrive. And Triple H is like, no, we got to treat this like wrestling, but it's also sports entertainment. But let's worry about getting the wrestling part fixed, and then we'll worry about bringing it back to the way it was. Yeah, because they're, they're slowly undoing the damage. Uh, yeah. It's a process. Uh, you know what? To, to, uh, MGF was probably thinking, wow, well, because I, because uh, apparently MGF was also backstage when that fight happened. I think he was just oh, watching God. it, and I guess they also, uh, her name's Mega or whatever, but she's the the Jacksonville Jaguars lawyer, and I guess the young the elite brought her in with them when they were confronting Punk. I guess the just what? so there wouldn't, yeah. I guess I don't know. I guess they needed like the observer, or whatever, or something. A witness. Yeah, I mean MGF is a witness, so I, I'm pretty sure he was getting interviewed. But I'm pretty sure when MGF Did... is seeing all this shit happen, he's probably thinking, "Oh, you you really fucking need me to save your fucking shit, Tony." No, more than anything, I'm thinking that he was like. Why did I come back with this money? He's probably I a little for he's, true. He's probably also thinking, "Oh yeah, you you really fucking need my help." <laughs> I was thinking more like the lines of like, "Well, I should have asked for more next time," or "I should have went to I should have went to WWE." I think I would have lasted a little longer in WWE. <laughs> like I could see him like just watching the whole thing, but his mind he's like casually thinking like. Huh? Should ask for more money. I should have. I should have. Maybe. Maybe I can still go to WWE. Who knows? I'll see how this fight ends. Like, I mean, either way, it's like, yeah, no, it's like MGF could not have come back at a perfect time. Yeah, because it's like, because like I said, I stopped watching AEW when he left because he was actually good, even on the stupid shit he was doing, like the like the Jericho feud with the sing along and all that. He was entertaining. He could do it all. I know that was all. You know that was all. Jericho. I heard Jericho wants him to be a baby face. He's trying to get him to be a baby face. No, no, I I don't want him the baby face. If he does become a baby face, it basically needs to be like the Stone Cold style baby. Yeah, face. he has to be an antihero. He can't be like. He should still be like MGF, like fucking talking shit. It's just people cheer him now, but he cannot be. Like a like a white meat clap and stomp baby face. No, he can't, and and that's the weird part. It's like it's it's just oh, AEW needs to get their shit together, and they're never gonna get their shit together. You're you might be right. It might be done within the next year. It's not. It might not make it to five year anniversary. Yeah, because because we also got to and if see it does, because. Well, also, like, Warner Discovery could say, yeah, you know, we really like him, da-da-da-da, but it's like, it's, at the end of the day, it's still up to David Zaslov. Yeah, and, and it could just end up being another, um, you know, time, um, time Warner merger back in the old days was like, well, Ted Turner's gone, this thing's not making money, you guys are gone. It could just be, it could just be, suppose that. And and if they do make it to the five an five year anniversary, what I want to see is a highlight reel of the fight, <laughs> like celebrating our five years of AEW. We had some drama, like our famous CM Punk versus Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks backstage with the infamous bite marks or like any, of Kenny Omega's arm, or any fight that Sammy Guevara is instigated. <laughs> it should be a dramatic reenact, re uh, one of those dramatic reenactment scenes, like in Mysterious Mysteries. <laughs> can Can I just say that that action figure has perfectly one hundred percent captured his douchebag likeness, dude? If you give that figure jeans and a real like, like, uh, uh, one of those collared shirts, like make him look like a Jersey Shore fucker. He'll just fit in perfectly like a Jersey Shore motherfucker. I I got when I was at Target, I saw that figure. I got douche chills just looking at it. 
<laughs> like, I would buy just to have a douchebag character in the background. Oh, dude. Like, yeah, it, it's perfect. Like, like he'll be a perfect character to have in the background during the Street Fighter stage in, in Kid's Bolt scene. <laughs> like, he's that oozy with the fucking douchebag ooze. So that uh, I guess that that's it for a bit of Rassen talk. You know, we just uh, again, it's just a sample. You know, just as a little treat. You know, it's a little treat. Like because I know we have some fans of wrestling fans, and we love wrestling too. We just we just haven't come up with a name of the podcast yet. As, we are still gonna do it. We just as you saw, we kind of went off at a tangent, which is why we're probably going to devote wrestling to its own just dedicated podcast. Yeah, because he could go, he could go in hours of talking about wrestling without even trying. Yeah, and and it, and it will, and it will just, it will not just be like wrestling happened. Of, like we will not just like review what bon, like today's wrestling. Heck, one day we'll just watch a good fucking video match and we'll just talk about that. Yeah, because if anything, again, there's so much there. Like we could talk old old stuff or even wrestling and video games, but I feel like that that should kind of be dedicated to its own show. Uh, yeah. but I guess, uh, I guess now, uh, we're, we're, we're at the end. So, uh, I, I guess the new thing we're going to be doing now is, we're, uh, at the end of every podcast, we're going to talk about just, uh, like, you know, stuff that we've been like watching or playing, um, uh, recently. So just, you know, whatever, like animes you've been watching or video games you've been playing or whatever, you know, shows or, or movies you saw. Yeah. So I'll go well- Oh, go ahead. Yeah, you go. Yeah, no, you go first. I was gonna say that you go first. All right. So yeah, it's it's uh, as far as uh, I've been doing. Uh, I recently finished. Uh, because a few weeks ago it ended, but I recently finished up a uh, Fudo Pi, the Common Rider double anime, and that that show's fucking great. I fucking love it. It's one of my top five for, uh, or top five or three for this year. Um, uh, I. Uh, I uh, apparently they did skip a few chapters in the manga, but it, they kept the story intact. And where it left, it left off at a good place. But I really hope we get a second season. Unfortunately, the 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 studio Studio Kai, uh, they're going through a bit of financial trouble right now. So I really hope Toei and Bandai could just throw money at them. But you know, as a fan of like you know, Comrade, especially Comrade Double. Uh, Show's fucking great. If you're new to Common Rider, you, is, especially if you have not seen Double, you don't necessarily have to watch Double to watch this show, but it helps a lot. There's a lot of stuff that, uh, especially little references and stuff that they do kind of th- uh, throw in. But where the show leaves off, it would have also been the perfect time to announce, hey, we're finally bringing Double over, but you know. To tell to tell is shooting themselves in the foot, but yeah, Fudo Pi fucking fantastic. It's great just to see an actual common writer anime. I hope not only do we get a season, I hope a second season. I hope we can get more common writer anime in general because there's so much you could do. Um, and then speaking of common writer, I've been watching uh common writer Geats, the 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 current season of uh common writer. Oh, how's that going? Geats is really good too. So Geats is another battle royale season, but unlike Ryuki and Gaim, they're not doing the whole uh, riders fighting each other. Instead, it's a it's more along the lines of uh, Gantz, Kaiji, and Squid Game, where they're playing these games to save the world. Oh, that's cool. And like, uh. uh but uh, each uh, each rider, uh, the whole goal is because Earth's being invaded by these monsters, and basically the plant, the world's ending, and so you're going to uh, everyone writes a uh, everyone competes in this uh, competition called the Desire Grand Prix, and every rider like they the goal uh, I guess the end goal is that uh, if you win, you get the basically you get to uh, create your own idealized world. So like, hey, here's a world where I'm a famous celebrity or here's a world where like, Hey, uh, uh, my son's, uh, my son who's sick is not going to die. So everyone has their own reasons for, for, uh, competing. And, uh, 
and yeah, you actually do get penalized for attacking other players. But w- one of the things I also like is that uh, is that he, uh, it's actually been devoting focus to a, a character who's not the main writer, and this dude is is like a dude that's like too nice for his own good, and he kind of gets his ass kicked for it. But he's also like the dude who's like pretty much like the most common writer. Like he actually wants to do some genuine good and. He wants to save people and and whatnot. I've been really digging the show. They Toei said that they've also taken inspiration from battle royale games like uh, Fortnite and Apex and PUBG. Uh, so far, like especially uh, the most recent episode, uh, shit's intensifying a bit, and it's funny because they're now like now down down uh, because part of the thing of the show is that Toei said that they're going to have the most writers in this season and like 50 oh, wow. writers and be like, well, how they fucking going to do that. And the, uh, the way they've done it is they taken a very kind of like a simplistic minimalist approach to suits where if you see the main suit for the writers, it's, it's like this black uh, uh, bo- body suit with like armor and then just the rider helmet and the belt. And then what they do is that uh, all the power ups, like all the weapon upgrades, and armor are all interchangeable yeah. between all the different riders. Though the the things though is that each there's uh each one is uh will be tied to a specific rider like an ID code. So even though everyone can use them, there's some there'll be ones that like because they're tied to that rider, it's better for them. So like the main rider Geats, he has uh the Magnum weapon, which is a gun, and uh he's better. It's it's his signature weapon, just like uh uh. This one guy, uh, Tycoon, he had the ninja weapons. Uh, Geats used them, but the signature weapons really just made for him. But they're all interchangeable. And I feel, okay, so they're keeping it pretty simple. That's how they're going to get, like, 50 riders. Okay, that's 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 a great idea. I like that approach. Yeah, and all the weapons, like the not like the unique rider armors that are meant for each character, but all the generic, like, lower-tier weapon sets... Are actually kit bash weapons from previous seasons. That's cool. Yeah, so I, I always like dig it when they reuse props like that. Uh, characters are really great. I I like that the main character is kind of an asshole. Like he's like he's the dude that's super confident, uh, and he's and he's been and he's lying to people and shit. He he uh, the the uh, Taiku the Kawa the guy who's like the the super nice guy that like actually wants to like world peace and save people he's manipulated him like twice just just, just so he can like use his opportunity to fucking sweep in and claim the victory but but it's messed up it's messed up but at the same time he's like he's still like helping people they there's they've given us they've given us like brief hints at his backstory so i am very curious but i kind of glad that we kind of gone back to like an overconfident kind of asshole writer because we haven't really had that in a while since Kabuto um but yeah I've been really digging it uh, uh, uh I can't wait to see more um and then I've also been watching uh Gundam the witch from Mercury which I need to see that yeah so a lot of people were a bit upset that tonally the show is different from the prologue but i have a feeling that they're going to it's going to be like a double zeta where the first half is going to be light and then the second half is when shit's going to get real and people are going to fucking die and it's going to get really depressing but right now it's a, it's more like uh utena meets gundam which is weird but it kind of works and i feel this is like sunrise's this is kind of like another G Gundam experiment where they're going to try and do something drastically different with Gundam, which again, I'm all for them taking a risk. And they've and they've also trying to get more more of a young uh not like a younger audience, but like, you know, like newer people in the Gundam. And they still have a lot of the uh, the politics in there, and it's kind of funny because people see like uh mobile suits being used in like police riot protests and they're shooting tear giant tear gas canisters like oh yeah this is this is like totally a reference to what's going on in the US actually no if anything it's a reference to what 
what's going on in Hong Kong. And, yeah. and two, a lot of these writers just they'll see like what's going on, like, oh yeah, that would be a good scenario for uh for an episode. But uh Yeah, they, they do they do that a lot. They take bits and pieces of what's going on in the real world and just use it. And it has to be no context at all. It's just like, oh, we could write around this. But yeah, like of course Gundam's always been political. It been, just hasn't like yeah. but it's it, it hasn't been like super Super shove, uh, shove shit down your throat. Uh, political. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm 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 digging the characters. Uh, it's fun. Like again, I can see why it's a bit polarizing for people, but I'm sticking with it and I'm enjoying it. Because again, I expect shit to just hit the fan once once we get closer to season two. Uh, because I think I think this is gonna be like. 12 or 13 episodes for each season. So uh, it's going to be shorter than Iron Blooded Orphans and some of the more recent ones. Because uh, yeah. those are like closer to 50, which I'm honestly fine with this uh, being a bit shorter. Some people just don't have time to commit to like a 50 episode thing. So it's totally understandable. But uh, yeah, I'm digging it. And I want to get, they made kits of the two main girls. And what's cool about these kits is that they're compatible with another line by Bandai, that 30 Minute Sisters. So you could make Mecha. Uh, I saw someone make a Mecha Girl hybrid of the main girl and her Gundam. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a really good looking custom. But, uh, and then, I mean, well, we talked about it. I watched uh, Edge Runners back. So I think, uh, I think uh, I'm going to try maybe like, uh, maybe like revisit. Uh, Go watch some older shows that I've been holding off. But as far as stuff I've been watching, that's about it. As far as games I've been playing, uh, I've been uh, recently I've been I've been playing um, Spark the Electric Jester three and uh, cool. Freedom Planet two. So those are like two of the best Sonic clones right now. Your Freedom Planet, your two D style, and uh, Sparks your three D style. Both fantastic game spark especially if you're a fan of 3d sonic adventure style because honestly i know this is controversial i've i've always preferred 3d sonic over 2d sonic uh so i've i've always been more towards like that adventure style of gameplay and i really dig that for spark but i love how uh at least for freedom planet is that it's 2d sonic but it's like 2d sonic if it was made by treasure yeah. Um, no, I don't blame you. I've always been a big fan of 3D Sonic Adventure games because they're because I'm a big fan of open world ish games. So Sonic being open world is actually a nice fresher pace. Like, don't get me wrong, the 2D ones are cool, but in the 2D ones, you only get like three race courses. Because a lot of people don't know that if you ever load up a Sonic level, you only get three way three lines to get to the end. But in the but the Sonic in open world games, you have more variety on how to select a mission, where to go next, and all that. Especially when it came down to um, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. So it was more fun that way. Well, Adventure 1 had that RPG hub world because originally Adventure 1 was yeah. going to be an RPG. Uh, yeah. And then 2 got rid of the hub and they just straight up made it stages. But they took all they the did. best aspects of those stages. Yeah. And the cool th and the thing is, it is stages again. But the thing is, you also have a little bit of free roaming too. When, when you want to visit the child garden yeah. and, and the between parts. Uh, I'm actually can't I can't wait for Frontiers. I know people were like when the first trailer dropped, people were like, uh, I don't know. Which it was rough. I I caught a play by IGN, and in fact, that Sega probably sent like an early version. But now, yeah. like you from people who've played the game it shows who really liked it it's been looking uh more and more it's been looking hype uh i recently saw a really badass uh video of the combat the combat looks insane giving sonic devil may cry band of the combat was like the best thing they could do that's why so i'm really also digging uh spark 3 because they just gave spark 3 like dmc combat uh uh, as far as other games, uh, I started playing the Demon Turf series, which uh, 
basically take Mario, Shantae, and Sonic Robo Blast Two and put it in a blender. And then with the sequel, you oh, add a wow. th- with the sequel, you add a, a bit of Splatoon in there. It's it's a 3D platformer using flat 2D sprites. So it cool. goes for that Sonic uh uh Robo Blast aesthetic, but it's really fun. And then uh been digging that. And then also I've been playing uh Fight of Steel. Uh this is this is like the fourth fighting game from uh let me get get their name right. It was uh uh I just want to get the name of the studio. I think it was like Digital Crafter. Yeah, Digital Crafter. They're the people who made a uh, fight of gods and fight of animals. So this is like their first like serious fighting game. And Fight of Steel is really dope because uh, <clears throat> so it's you know it has like a cyberpunk like robot aesthetic, but I guess humans have long been gone, wiped out, so it's all just robots. But yeah. you you can choose like a base like default character, or you could fully customize your character with parts and move sets and animations. You give them all your the different taunts or the walking animations. You give them all the different moves you want. You give uh, just normals and specials and supers. You can change their appearance. It has it does use a bit of that simplified control scheme of like. No, oh, two buttons and then and then like uh the special button and a direction. But it works for this game. I feel because again, this game's more about customization and it's got a story mode. And I also thought it was really cool as a as a free update, they threw in uh robot versions of Jesus and Buddha. <laughs> nice. Uh so yeah, Fight of Steel is really sick. Uh that's really fun. And yeah, it's just it, I think that's about it as far as what I've been uh, doing. How about you? Well, when it comes to watching stuff, um, I th- the only anime I've been watching right now is Chainsaw Man. And a lot of people have a lot of mixed reviews about it. Some say it doesn't really stay true to the source. Some say it does. For me, it it's a yes and no like it's not gonna it's not gonna it's not gonna tell the whole story from the manga because there's certain things in the manga you can't have in a anime show uh, especially in this audience but i like i like the fact that it's keeping true to the the main focus of the story like it's it's keeping the true story of of the kid and his um new abilities and then the the agency and the characters like it's keeping true to that so it's basically they cut some stuff out for the better. Um, it's it's really going fast paced. Like it's really want to really tell the story. Like it is not dicking around. Like it's gonna be one of those animes that it's gonna tell the story. It's gonna be done, and there is gonna be a season two later type of deals. So Chainsaw Man is really good. I like the animation. I like I like they give make the fight scenes look cool, just like the manga does it. So. So it's it's on track. So I like I, I like Chainsaw Man so far. You might you might like it too, like for some parts. Yeah, I've, I've been wanting but, to check it out, but I think I want to read the manga first. Yeah, read the manga. The manga is way more fun, and you uh, it brings out some key stuff differences from the anime. Because the anime just um, started, so I yeah, I, I, I think it's I could wait two a episodes. bit. You could you could definitely wait a bit. Um. And then I saw the the latest Halloween movie, and that stirred up a lot of controversy with fans. Uh, some fans didn't like it. Some fans did. Some were like indecisive. It's like, I'll tell you this. It's a good movie as a movie. It had a cool idea. I wish they executed it, but they chickened out and went with a generic Halloween ending, in the sense of like. Let's just bring back Mike Myers and call it a day. And I it sucks because the babysitter was actually the cool part of the movie. He literally brought that movie up. It wasn't a another shitty sequel. But that one was cool. Um I end up re downloading Shudder again for another Halloween movie, um uh, VHS ninety nine. I was a little disappointed on it because some of the stories were not that great. There was only two that stood out. Um, 
people don't know about VHS is um, VHS is one of those movies that have five stories into one. Technically six, because you have the main story as the actual story, and then when the guy looks through the tapes and all that, it shows the other stories. And then it will, in the end, it will show you the main plot of the main story, technically. So, kind of like um, Tales from Tales on the Creep Show, the main story was about this kid who buys a plant in a comic book, and the bullies bully him around, but before they throw the plant to the side, you get the three stories from the comic book, and then the main story is the plant that eats the kids. So it's that. But the VHS stories had, like, there were some good ones. There's some good banger ones, like, 99, I was a little disappointed. It did have the feel, though. It really had the feel of the late 90s because the first story was like these punk, this rock band, but it's like a wannabe CKY crew, like BAM. So I had them doing stunts. They had them doing CKY shit. But the story was about them going to this um, basement that was burned, and the fans trampled this old punk band called uh, Bitch, Bitch Cats. And when they went down there, well... The spirits came back to life and they cut the fucking the wannabe CKY crew up and make them take their places to live down in the basement now. Like they finally found the souls and made them live there. Like they, they swapped basically. They finally could live in peace, but they had to kill these kids for it. Um, that one was pretty cool. Um, the other story was about, you know, the sorority groups, about hazing. And of course they buried one alive. And that one was very unsettling because... I'm, I'm a little claustrophobic, so I can actually feel the claustrophobic in this one. And it's like, oh, shit, that's the worst thing that could happen. And I don't want that to happen. Uh, another another story was there was. Oh, there's 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 a good one. They had the actor who played Trevor from Grand Theft Auto and it was Double Dare, but it was fucked. Oh, no, nice. no, not Double Dare. It was a it was a mixture of Double Dare and the, 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 the Hidden Temple. And it was fucked up because. The girl entered that game show and broke her fucking leg. Oh, fuck. And, and you see the bone and shit, too. And it, and the actor Trevor goes, well, you got well, you you signed the waiver. And then you see the next scene. He's in his underwear trapped in a cage, and he's going through that shit because the mother felt like it was race-related. But he's like, no, the reason why she lost is because we can't afford the prize. Was uh... Our show was... Did, did did Twitch and NVIDIA host this? Basically, yeah. It was basically that. That's what I was thinking. It was fucked up because they made the actor Trevor to go through the same obstacle course, but the obstacle course was with fake, you know, fake slime and fake shit. He went through real shit and real slime. And if he didn't get the key in time, they were going to put, they were going to throw acid in his body. But the ending is kind of stupid. That's what killed it. It was one of those, like, it was good until the ending ruined it uh what was another good story in that oh helen back was cool someone actually basically redid the story of dante's inferno with two dumbass nerds with a camera it's like imagine bill and ted went to the real hell and it's great but the ending i feel bad for the ending because they actually got out but the the coat that brought him back was like, oh, we fucked up, and they killed them. Because, well, we saw them as normal people, but to them, they saw them as demons. So, I'm like, oh, that sucks. They they became demons on the way out. Uh, what was another? The main story was, the main story was, um, Medusa is the neighbor. But the cool thing is, they did the whole um, America, uh, uh, oh, what's that movie? With, that had that actor that kind of got canceled now. The one, um... Oh, what's that? Do you have any idea the how one, little it narrows it down? It's the one who did that Christopher Walken impression. Oh, um... Oh, okay. Uh, I don't want to say his name, but we know who we're talking about. Okay. Um, so, you know the movie he did with, you know, he, he, it was about an old guy seducing a young girl? Yeah. It's um, American Beauty. So imagine American Beauty, but instead of a creepy old dude next door, it's literally Medusa that's living next door. Okay. And it's pretty cool. Like, So VHS 99 was okay. It's not bad, but it's better. But I could say this. It's better than Viral. And Viral was the worst one out of all of them. 
So if you're into like five stories at one type of deals, VHS 2 will be your best bet to start. They don't connect, by the way. They don't. It's just one of those like creep show. They don't have, they don't connect. You can start any one you want. But 2 and VHS 94 are the best ones. But VHS, the first one was good. Like it's decently good. But Viro and 99 are like, they're, they're like, you don't really need to watch those. But that's what I end up watching so far. Anime and movie wise. What I've been playing so far is I'm still doing the stream of The Thing. It's fucking hard. It is fucking hard. It's in the sense of like the mechanics. Like the gameplay is fine. The gameplay is decent. It's the er, you know, it's it was during the era of the early analog days. Like you know, you know when they started using analog more for shooters. Yeah. Like right stick looks up. Right stick looks around. Left stick moves. It's that. It it works fine. It's just. The game has this one little hitch that you really have to do it. It's the trust mechanic. Any survivors you find along the way, you have to give them reasons to trust you. And if they don't trust you, they will not follow you. And if they get attacked by the creature, they become the creature. So you really have to keep your eyes open on that. And on top of that, it, at some point, you actually could become the creature and it's game over. So there'll be times I'll tell you, hey, test your blood. And I'm like, oh fuck! If if I test my blood and I have and I have it, like, cause there's there's a way to get rid of it. There's an antidote, but it only works for you though, for some weird reason, story wise. But if you don't use the antidote before you test your blood, and they see your blood going crazy, they automatically shoot you, like, on the spot. So the game really focuses on trusting your partner AI and trust. And if you fuck that up, well, the game gets very difficult from there. Like you could beat the game by yourself, but you don't want to do that because you do need you do need the people with you because you have three. These are the three type of classes of the people you have to have with you: an engineer, a soldier, and a medic. Because you could do all that stuff yourself, but it's better to have the three AIs with you. And they're not dumb AIs; they actually are really competent AIs. They're like very good. Whoever programmed the AIs for this game did a great job. Uh, for a PlayStation 2 game. It was kind of ahead of its time for shit like this. Um, and I can see why it leads up to the... Why this is a quote-unquote sequel of the movie. Because the first thing you see when you land on the actual place of the last movie... Uh, the African-American dude is dead. With a bottle in his hand. So that indicates that... Oh shit, we're literally on the same spot from the movie... From the John Carpenter movie. But we're not sure if that dude was the thing. Or or Kurt Russell's character was the thing. You still don't know. That's the cool part. You still find a way to double guess yourself. Even even it is a sequel to the movie. So I'm having fun with it. I'm still going to. I'm going to try to stream that. This upcoming Thursday and Friday. Depends how dated this video is. And if, it, if I upload this right after I'm done streaming it. Well, you could go back to the channel and rewatch the part, part whatever it is on, because I have part one uploaded. Chances are it's gonna be three parts, because it's not a long game. Because I found out that the last I stopped at, I was already halfway done, so I might be able to beat it within one day. So that's what I've been up to: just playing the thing, watch two horror movies, and Chainsaw Man. Nothing much. All right, dope. Dope. So then, uh, oh, yeah, I guess that's about it then. Yeah, that's about it. And that's the month of October. And like I said, whenever this comes up, happy Halloween or happy past Halloween. It's a uh, happy Dia de los Muertos, too. Yep. Happy Dia de los Muertos. But, uh, well, yeah, and then, uh, so just, I guess, a little hint for, uh, for next month. We're, uh, let me let me pull up the show. Uh, actually, let me let me see the poster really quick. Because uh, we're we're next month we're going to be going to the uh, the video game indie showcase in uh in Burbank uh, next month at the Game Realm store. So we're going to try and uh, get some content for the sh uh for the uh for the podcast and for the channel. But uh, there's going to be a bunch of uh. 
bunch of indie games there uh, uh, that you could play. So we're going to uh, we're going to check that out because there's uh, obviously there's stuff like we're familiar with, like River City Girls 2 and um, Shovel Knight Dig. Uh, uh, but then there's also uh, Dawn of the Monster. But then there's also a few. It's like, oh, man, like I had no idea Wave Break existed. Like, where has this game been all my life? Yeah, so we're gonna rev we're gonna go there, play some indie vi indie video games at um, it's it's in um Burbank, right? Yeah, yeah, Burbank at a game store called Game Realm. A yeah, Game Realms, um, yeah. Game Realms, yeah. And I've been there once, but it was for the Angry Video Game Nerd sighting. So it's a cool store. It is a really cool store. Yeah, so we'll uh we'll definitely have that the the talk about for sure, and hopefully uh. Hopefully there's no more gaming controversies, but you never know. Yeah, this this crazy business of gaming, there's a lot could happen. Well, well, I guess we'll say see you later and have a have a safe Halloween. Later, fuckers. <laughs> Peace. Peace.